and yeah it, it is underway go for it we're underway well welcome back everybody to part two of in high dungeon uh it's myself lawrence whittaker and uh i'm with in wills and the in crowd and we're going to carry on where we left off playing the leoness scenario in high dungeon from last week so chaps welcome back thank um, you it's good to see you've returned that's always a good sign I'm very encouraging <laughs> for a gene um so thank you very much indeed for that so just to recap on where we left things uh last week the madame neneve's festive fellows have uh, shipped up in the village of low dungeon uh just on the eve of the midsummer games um you found that there's a certain degree of rivalry and consternation between high dungeon and low dungeon with high dungeon being accused of cheating and you have been recruited by a couple of the village elders beldwain and chaylet to get to the bottom of what might be causing this cheating um in the course of your investigations and actually before they started you'd found a a, a strange horseshoe embedded the wrong way up in the gatepost that led into the the meadow where the uh, midsummer games will be taking place and you found several other horseshoes scattered around the village um at the sawmill mm -hmm. at the tavern inside the the village well and also above the lintel for the cottage of Renya, who's um, a local spinster that you have been lodging with uh, over the past couple of days. Um, Surford the Mighty has fallen hopelessly in love with her, and at every single attempt to make his love known and woo her, completely screwed it up. Um, and the, she she had hightailed it off to her friend Mark Wallen at the sawmill to take refuge with with poor Surford in hot pursuits, uh, and then getting cut off by a very angry Mark Wallen who told mm. him to do one. Um, now we kind of left it with you all deciding. Uh, what you were going to do on day two of the games themselves. Um, we had Siedney going to go and practice the donkey jousting, uh, having become an honorary member of the donkey jousting team. Um, Bascule had just managed to pick the pocket of one of the charcoal burners who seemed to be spoiling for a fight with uh, the high dungeoners if they can possibly uh, engineer that happening. Um, and then we had uh, Surford and Mandelbrot who were pondering what they should do and decided that they were going to tackle the horseshoe and try and loose it from the lintel above Renya's uh, doorway. So we're going to pick things up at the Midsummer Meadow and the donkey jousting. Um, this is Sir Edney's golden moment. This is what he's been waiting for. Um, this is uh, one of the, the practice sessions before, in fact, no, we're, we're just gonna go for one of the heats for for the games themselves. This is this is live. So you, you've been practicing all morning. Um, you think you've got the hang of these, uh, of these donkeys. They're, they're a bit more stubborn than your horse, Hollyhock. Uh, they, they, they need a little bit more goading, a little bit more persuasion. Of course, they go at a much steadier, slower gait. Um, but nevertheless, armed, armed with your broom and your bucket helmet, uh, which has got a habit of slipping down over your eyes at crucial moments, just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, you, are, you are preparing to face off against um, one member of the high dudgeon donkey jousting team um now what i would like is someone to give me a 1d4 roll and this will determine the quality of your opponent i think see yedney should make this roll. oh we all made uh, it no, no, it's fine it's fine <laughs> all right okay i don't mind so so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take uh let's see so what have we got there so we have got a three for mandelbrot okay so your opponent has got a jousting skill of 75 percent so there are <laughs> going to be a number of roles and they will be compared to see how you actually uh, come together in the joust itself and the first one is going to be a influence role to persuade your donkey to just start bloody moving because of course it's they're donkeys they're stubborn they, they they take immense amount of persuasion to go anywhere or do anything you are perched on your donkey with your broom 
tucked under your arm, your helmet over your, your head, which keeps slipping down over your eyes, just like to throw that in. Um, and first thing you've got to do is give me an influence roll to make your donkey move. No, so gently whacks his heels against the haunches of the donkey and goes, get it! <laughs> okay, so it's at a flat stop. Right, yes. so I am going to uh, roll now for the other guy. Right, the other guy is a success. He's clapped his heels into his donkey's flanks and the donkey has now started to saunter towards you. There is a grin spreading across your opponent's face. He's wearing a colander for his <laughs> helmet. It's not slipping down over his eyes. It's staying perfectly still. He's got a nice chin strap around it. You wish you'd thought of that. Uh, right, so we have you still trying to get your donkey even moving. Mm -hmm. So that's roll one. Um, okay. So roll two, you've still got to get your donkey moving. You can have another influence roll. With a few oaths muttered under his breath. Okay, that is a success. So we've now got you at 25. Now, the next roll is going to be a ride roll. You're a roll behind here. So this is for him to try and pick up the pace and sort of level with you. Okay. Um, so my roll for ride is... Ooh, he's got a crit. Okay, uh, so he's actually got his donkey going at a real gallop. He's bearing down on you, and he's levelling his broom now across that tilt. You've only just managed to get your donkey walking, and it's, it's kind of making huffing noises, and your buckets just slip down over your eyes again, so it's not looking good. Um, can I have a ride roll from you, please, now? So, yeah. <laughs> So it's, it's, oh. I, I think he had one too many. Uh, it looks like he had one too many motivations. Okay, so you are still, right. Your your donkey is just plodding there. Um, <laughs> the high dudgeon donkey jouster uh, is is hurtling down the tilt now, and his third roll is going to be an insight roll to see if he can guess your tactics. And if he succeeds Ooh. in this, there is a chance he might unhorse you. So, uh, here we go with my roll. I get a 56, which is a success. That puts me onto a... He's, he's on course to send you hurtling out of the saddle if his final role actually succeeds, which will be his jousting role. Um, you can give me an insight role as well to see if you can anticipate what he's likely to do. Oh, buckets, push, push oh, the bucket up. And you okay, you manage exactly to slot the bucket up to your hand. Uh, right, you are on 50. It's not looking good. You can see exactly, you know exactly what these consequences are going to be if that broom strikes you. So the fourth and final roll, this is a jousting roll. Mm -hmm. um, now I will let you augment this um, with your athletics, given that you know that he may try and unhorse you, but I am also going to augment his jousting roll with his brawn, because he knows where he's going to put his, uh, his lance or his broom. Okay. So I'll let you roll first. So is that my combat style? This is your combat style, yeah. Yeah, um, and then I can augment it with uh, my athletics. Um, so that's 10%, so that's, so that's seven, you can add on. I'm happy. Okay, so we've got a success like there. Yeah. Okay, so you go into that on a 75. Right, the final roll for this guy. His jousting roll is 75, augmented by his brawn, which is giving him plus 10. So he's on 85. And I get a 17, which is a success. So 
Out of that task, the final scores were 125 to the High Dudgeon Jouster and 75 to poor old C. Edney. Um, there is a sickening crunch as the haft of the broom clangs straight into your your uh, your shield the force of which given the speed that the donkey of your opponent is traveling at is going to unhorse you um i'm going to allow you to make either an athletics or an acrobatics roll if you have either uh, uh, if you have athletics. acrobatics you've definitely got athletics i've, I've got athletics i don't have acrobatics uh, okay give me an athletics roll nope okay you thud to the ground and you are going to take some damage um i am going to give you uh let's see you actually weren't moving very fast so the differential damage is going to be slightly lower than it would have been you're going to have 2d6 damage to uh let's see i think three locations Oh, ouch. Right, so that's 10 points of damage that you've taken. That is okay. quite nasty as you come splintering off the uh, the donkey. Um, given that it's such a brutal roll, I am not going to apply that to more than three locations, uh, to, to, to three locations at the same time. We will just apply it to, we'll split it in two and you can apply it to two locations. So five points of damage to, let's see, uh, your 14. Five points of damage to the 14, okay. So that's on zero to my right arm now. And to 13. <laughs> He's completely landed on his right arm. That's, that's oh, minus God. five. Right, so how many points do you have left in your right arm? Uh, I'm on minus five. <laughs> minus five, and what were you on? Five. What was your original? It was on five. So I had a total of five. So I've just right. taken 10 points through to the right arm. Ow. So, so you've taken 10 points. Like right. So that, that is a major wound to your right arm. There is a horrible sickening crunch as you land on your, your right arm, thrown from the donkey, the force of that broom knocking you flat to the ground. Um, the arm is going to be broken. Um, I would like an endurance roll from you, please. I'm going to use a luck point to reverse that one. <laughs> uh, you, 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 you can, can see the. You, you can see. Sorry. Uh, I'll use a luck point to reverse that if I'm if I'm able to. Okay, so you've got two options with the luck points. Um, you can okay. either reverse that roll, or you could spend a luck point to downgrade the roll from major to a serious wound. So you'd actually go from second. minus ten to uh, we, we will put you at right. minus. Yeah. Is that what you want to do? Or do you want to just try and, um, and take the wound and try and resist with the endurance? Uh, no, I'll do the, the second one. So I'll downgrade it if that's right. You're going to downgrade. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, right. So your, your arm is dislocated rather than mm -hmm. badly broken. Um, you still need to give me that endurance roll it's, it's, anyway, but I will we'll let you re-roll it. That's very kind of you. Okay. Um, the, the shock of seeing or feeling your arm pop out of its socket has meant that you, you have fainted and lost consciousness. Um, you're dimly aware of uh, a couple of your, your comrades carrying you off the, the, uh, the, the tournament field. Um, there are cheers going up from the high dungeon crowd. Um, there's a sort of lots of grumbling that you can dimly hear as you you just lapse into full unconsciousness from the low dudgeon crowd. No worries. I wouldn't be surprised if the donkey gave me a kick as I went down as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, sadly, low dudgeon lost that round. That's going to be a bitter blow for them. Uh, it's a good job there's not a box, a box for coccyx. <laughs> <laughs> you had to okay. go there. Uh, <laughs> now, Bascule, you, you, you were over at the... Uh, at the meadow because you've been busy picking people's pockets um of course there's lots of people watching the um 
the the donkey jousting. It's one of the main events. So you have seen all this happening. You you've seen poor Sayedni being carried off with his his uh, his arm hanging out of its its shoulder socket. Uh, what do you have to do? I had been intending to go see Surfy, but um, or Surfod. Uh, but I think with this uh, clever distraction that my comrades made for me, I'd like to spend some time picking pockets since I have to pay up to, uh, to Nineveh uh, anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So there's quite a crowd of people uh, gathered around watching the, um, the, the donkey jousting. Uh, there are lots of purses that you can cut and pockets that can be picked. Um, give me a D4 roll, please. Absolutely. Ooh. Okay. Um, one of the people that looks like quite an easy mark uh, seems to be a low dungeonite. Um, he's uh, got a, a big sort of thick belt around his waist, and there's a nice fat purse looped around it. Um, he's not paying any attention to it because he's busy gossiping with his neighbor he's got a big flag and a veil in one hand look at that oh that's going to hurt he says as um what's he gets thrown off the the donkey oh go you hear that pop just like a pea coming out of a pot and he's busy being agreed with by uh his his thinner compatriots and uh they uh moan about how low dudgeon has lost again so his attention is wholly consumed by what's been happening so that will give you a chance to get that that purse either cutting it or opening it up and slipping your fingers nimbly inside um the, the cutting sounds like it'd be more effective but uh once baskel gets closer i would assume he'd try what feels more most natural uh, least so likely to be noticed Okay, it, it's probably just sort of standing behind him and casually undoing the, um, the the buckle and slipping your hand inside and and seeing what's in there. So I'll uh, let you have a go at that. So if you uh, give me a roll for it. Um, see, last time we used juggling to steal the uh, charcoal burners. That was uh, actually flipped the money because you're critical. So we we flipped the money deftly into your mm. your pocket. Gotcha. Um, would this be a stealth then? This is going to be a stealth roll. Excellent. <laughs> 71 of 78. 71 out of 78. Okay. So um, you slip your hand in there. That is a good roll for you. Um, I'm penalizing our friend that you're busy robbing at the moment. That's good, I think. Yeah, complete failure. He he is absolutely unaware as you lift out a nice pouch full of coins from his uh, his purse and slip it neatly inside uh, the pockets of of your own. Feels nice, fat, and heavy. That one. Excellent. Uh, with with that uh that excellent bag of coins, I gotta share share the wealth. So my my goal is to to search for a. Uh, our injured friend and give his his a uh, part of the share his his a uh, medical funds if you will <laughs> okay well poor old Siedny has been carried over to um the the low dudgeon uh ranks and uh, their tents where the donkey jousters have set up for the day um one of the uh the uh, the, the other jousters he, he, he says knowledgeably leave this to me Stand back, everybody. I know how to pop an arm back in its socket. Trust me. I've seen it done loads of times. Uh, he, he doesn't look like he knows really what he's doing, but he's going to have a crack at it anyway. So I'm going to give him a first aid roll. Um, this is at a penalty because it's 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 pretty nasty injury here. And we get a 62. There is a horrible grinding sound. He sort of picks up the arm and he's sort of pushing and pulling and pushing and try, oh, it won't go in. He sort of just lets the arm drop. It's a good job you're unconscious because this is, this is hurting like buggery right now. Uh, completely fails to get the arm in there. Well, it looked easy last time. Baskill is, is absolutely speechless here, um, not knowing anything better to do. Um, 
uh, he certainly doesn't know how to put an arm back in. Um, and this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Is, is there, uh, I don't think, I, I was going to say, is there a, a medicine man or, or a healer's area that Basco would know of? I don't think he saw anything of, of that type. Um, the, oh, I, he has an idea. He's going to okay. go find Sir Fod. Okay. <laughs> well, Sir Fod, last time you saw him, was back at uh, Renius Cottage, which is just on the other side of the meadow. So you can uh, you can run across there in probably no time at all, go in the back way where you, you've been camping. And uh, sure enough, you find Servet and um, Mandelbrot there pondering, uh, probably you you two are probably pondering the horseshoe that's uh, firmly fixed to the lintel above uh, the, the doorway. We are. Serfot, my friend, we, we, we try to, you know, we need to get this, this, this off here. If you, if you leave me to it, we can get this off here. And hopefully, it'll bring your love straight to you. Well, she will love me again. Well, if the signs are right, I'm sure it's going to be true. We you mean we, again? We... <laughs> <laughs> it presupposes she loved you in the first place. <laughs> I fall in love easily. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking love. any luck as any gaze glance in my direction as complete true love. That's it. Uh, so, so far, I sort of like look at this uh, horseshoe on, on the lintel and sort of like um, uh, turn to Amanda Brot and says, Do you want me to pull it off? No, 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 no. It'll be fine. I, I, I will, I will endeavor and do my best and my greatest to do it the way I did before. So you saw the way I did it. It's a, it's, a, it's a strength of the mind, not the brawn. So far, not will hands. reach out as if to pick Mandelbrook no. up uh, underneath the armpit. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think that's it. It means you don't have to go and get a stepladder from someone. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. So you're, you are within reach of the horseshoe, Mandelbrook. One moment, he says. Give me one second, please. Uh, it'll be a family crisis. Okay, I think it's this This is the right time for a breathless bascule to come hurtling over the meadow, uh, waving his hands, going... Okay, there's something to tell both of you. I see you're still horsing around, yeah. so you can... So far, he's just can... got Mandelbrook up, up and he uh, <laughs> looks down at you. <laughs> what are you doing, you crazy fool? Look, we've got important, important things. Two things, actually. First off, Surfy. Yeah. I, I pull the bag of coins I stole from the charcoal burners. I pull that out and I toss it to to Surf, Surfy, even though he probably isn't going to catch it in time. The charcoal burners. <laughs> Surfon's not stupid. He's not going to sort of like release Mandelbrot and let him fall. But Ooh, it's so it's so tempting. It's so tempting. But I think what probably more happened is that the the coin bag and the sort of like fly almost like into him as he's the sort of, and the sort of guy slap <laughs> on his back. It, it, it's quite. It, it's actually quite a heavy bag of coins. Um, so I think what we'll have here is an unarmed roll, please, from um, Basquiat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, unarmed here. Oh, <laughs> uh, thirteen of forty-five. Okay, you you have thrown it with just enough accuracy and force that it will not injure uh, Surford when it smacks him right in the side of the cheek, which Allow it does, it. and then and then thuds to the ground with a very very satisfying sounding chink. So uh, that was goes. my intention. So far, this goes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, look, Surfy, it's an apology. The charcoal burners came to me. They said they were being rude, and they get, they offered to pay for festivities, and so this is their apology, and they, they were too embarrassed to, 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 to come up to you yourself. So they said, just don't mention it, you know? It, it's, he'll it's, just, it's just a... Keeping uh, Mandel up there, he'll just... Surfod will just move his foot so it goes onto the pouch. Okay. As, as if he's claiming it <laughs> yeah and then he'll just turn to um mandelbrot and says are you done uh, no, no, no that was you haven't even started yet 
<laughs> okay. Right, so you can give me a willpower roll augmented by your fairy magic. Certainly, yes. Um, I got really you're, worried you're... then. I thought willpower was coming to me. <laughs> uh, oh. you, you'll see Mandelbrot's eyes kind of glaze over as he... As, as he then interweaves into this horseshoe, he's picking up the threads of the spell that's in there just to, to, to get behind them and hopefully break them off and, and, and snip them. So he, he, his head will twitch a little bit as he's going in there, and you want a 51. That's going to be 11. Where's my willpower? There we go. Sorry, my apologies. 11. Dick, dick, dick. And he is so confused by what's happened with the little jig that he's had from the, the, the coin that's that, 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 that's hit Sephrod. The, that he's sort of like distraction that's thrown in the, the horseshoe is. It, it will not shift. You feel the, the, the strong it, tingling running through your arms, and you will lose a magic point for that. Yeah. But um, the, the, it, it remains resolutely in place. It probably sort of shifts a little bit. You think you've got it, and then bang, like a really strong magnet, whack, it goes back against the wood. Are you finished yet? So, Sephiroth, did you... What happened? I was distracted there by by something. What what happened? I was I was focused. It was coming, and then all of a sudden, I I just it, 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 nothing happened. What happened? So far, did they sort of like lower him to 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 the ground, and they say, "I think it's easy if I try to pull it off." Well, have a go, my friend. Feel free. He's all right. Looks Remember? at it. Don't damage the house. Yeah, he sort of like looks at it and he thinks, do you think that might be load bearing? <laughs> yes, it's a lintel. It's definitely load bearing. I don't want to ruin our house. I don't think that would do much for oh, our no. romance. Okay, well, look, you, you've, um, you've already tried pulling off the horseshoe from the gatepost and look what happened last time you pulled the, the gatepost Pull right gatepost. out. So you know the brute force. Brute force isn't the answer here. You know that obviously uh, Mandelbrot has been using some of his, his magically widdly diddly stuff, timey wimey kind of thing. Um, so maybe a, a, taking a, a, a different approach might help it. Give me an insight roll. And it, we'll actually make this an easy insight roll as well. So, <laughs> just so we can keep things moving along. Oh! <laughs> There we go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe if you focus your love for Renya, maybe you can channel that and maybe the cottage will give it up for you. So I, by, by using the power of love, you can hear... Um, who sang that? Was it Jennifer? No, that's something? a great title for a song. You know? the, 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 power band of, um, and the, um, the band that's been practicing and playing the soundtrack. They've just struck up with the Jennifer power Rush. of love. Was it Jennifer Rush? Somebody like that. Yeah. Anyway, so that that's just the stirring music is playing in the background. You feel your love for Renya powering up through your soul. You reach out to your hand. You place your fingers, these massive, huge, club-like fingers over the horseshoe, and you give me a willpower roll augmented by your fall in love easily, and you get a... So um, if I'm augmenting it, it, is it 10% or 20%? 20. 20. So fall in love is 76. So uh, that would be 7.6. 16. 16. Oh, mm. no. <laughs> Are you sure you want willpower? I want willpower. <laughs> Can I just apologise now, everyone? You tell it. Oh! <laughs> so, now, oh, hang on, hang on, because I will, I will look, point that and, and re reverse it. So that will give you a 29, 29. which is a... Can I just say? Success. Yay! Yay! Because off it pops. Um, I, I'll just look at Mandelbrot and sort of say, there's no... No need for your little twiddly fingers violin-y thingy here. And okay. imagine what we'll back and go, How? Love conquers all. 
Right. So the, you've lost a magic point for that. You feel a tingling through your your body as the uh, the horseshoe kind of pops pops right off there. Um, now, how many have you detached from various places altogether? Uh, this will be our second second one. Okay, right. Um, Mandelbrot, would you give me a D hundred roll, please? Mm, certainly. Okay, um, you may you feel a disturbance in the magical energy mm. that uh, you've been picking up all the way through this village. It's almost as though everything leaps to the left by half an inch for a, a second and then yeah. jumps back again. Something has just magically occurred. You don't know what. You just mm. have this weirdest feeling. You've got butterflies in your stomach now. It, it's it, it's a, a little. You've never come across anything like this whatsoever, but something has just occurred. Saffron, what whatever you did, my friend, was it, 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 something's happened somewhere, and 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 I don't know what. It it, it it's it, my whole being is it, it, it's been shifted. It, it's. But I wonder if it's because you you took the second one off, or, or or was it because something else has happened? A school? Have you noticed anything happened happening in in, in the meadows? Yes, actually, it was the strangest strangest thing. Actually, I, I was I was doing work for our our troop, and then one of our festive fellows broke his arm, and they're manhandling him down there in a, in a way where it's a good thing he's unconscious and that's why i came up here to, to deliver the apology so that we could uh, ignore those charcoal burners and, and live our lives and also that i thought sir fod might be able to jam that arm back into the right location i can probably give it a yank yeah we should probably <laughs> make haste but if we want to look at this door frame longer i guess we could no, no the, 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 door frame's the, fine the, 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 it's it's fine the door it's, it's fine Bring, bring bring the horseshoe with you, pop it in your pocket or in your, in your bag, bring it with us, and let's see what's happened. Is, Sir, is it? So Fod will uh, put it somewhere safe, but also reach down and take the bag that his of coins that his foot was on, and heft it a little bit. Then probably put that in his breeches as well. And okay. Then says to um, Baskul, where 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 is it? Where is he? Follow me. I'll, I'll, I'll lead you guys down there. We, we better scoop up our friend, you know. Uh, and then I'll, I'll lead them down to, to where Sir Yedney was... Unconscious. Last unconscious. <laughs> Don't deliver at the door, two shakes. Yeah, no worries. It is, okay. Sir, is Sir Yedney sort of like out cold then? Yes, he is. He's, uh, he, he's completely unconscious. He failed his endurance roll oh. when his arm was popped out of his socket. And good That's thing surprising. too as well. Uh, he's not looking in a, in a good state. His arm is hanging at a very funny angle down by his side. There's a number of puzzled villagers standing over him arguing about the best way to put it back in. Someone's got a crowbar. <laughs> and, um, sort of uh, <laughs> Gingerly looking at how at how that that could be put to good use, as he probably arrived just in the nick of time. Actually, on a, a number of women are standing around with their arms folded, sort of supervising the men, going, "No, no, 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 no." I think if you kick it, kick it, yes, that will that will do. Mm, yeah. Do do we have in our troop um, with Lady Nenever's sort of like travelling circus? Do we have anybody who deals with anything like this? Um, Usually, you know, Madame Nenova, yeah. yeah, she's the uh, she's the one that deals with with cuts, scrapes, colds, sneezes, uh, minor bouts of the plague, that kind of thing. And where whereabouts would she be at the moment? Uh, well, she is currently supervising the uh, the performances that are going on elsewhere in the meadow. So uh, there'll be some of the other performers, and uh, and she's. Uh, She's over there. Um, they're not aware of the commotion that's happened right. with the, the donkey jet. So, Ma go for it. Man Mandelbrot will, um, will, will step in and have a look at Jedry. And, and he'll be like, oh, I think I can do something with this. And, and he'll, he'll try to, like, 
put his hand on the arm and he'll just twist it slightly after having a good look at it. Um, and, and, and try to push it into place. Um, would that be to make a first thing? So Yedney just gives an involuntary screech <laughs> across the unconscious. <laughs> it's all right. I have the combat oh. trait of knockout blow, so don't worry. <laughs> if, you, if you come out, Val's a Yedney. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, can I use my first aid just to? Um, ask yeah, to you, what, can, what, you can. You can definitely. Yes, yes. I, I'm quite it. happy to hold Sir Jedney <gasps> down if need be. I tell you what, I will use a one point of luck this time to change that from a ninety-one to a nineteen. To a nineteen. Which make it a formidable. If that's okay. Okay, it, it it takes a number of attempts. Um, the the scraping sounds are, are not pleasant, um, but then you. you that there is a click and you manage to relocate the arm in its socket and it back it, it sort of pops in. So uh, given that that was a success, um, we're going to give, oh, I'll be Joe, you, you can have three hit points back in, in that arm, Long Shanks. Very so uh, that you're still negative. Nice. That arm is useless at the moment. And that's your right arm, it which means right you're going to have difficulty performing as well. Because that's your sword arm, I dare say. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. But uh, eventually you regain consciousness. Uh, your shoulder hurts like hell. Uh, you're probably going to need a sling for the next couple of days mm -hmm. until it, it sort of has time to, to properly heal. Um, and so, God, the pain's excruciating still but at least it's back where it should be yes so, so when eventually say edney does um does come around he um and if his arm will already be in the sling he'll go seth i've been using my arm as a weight thing again i can't feel it ah never touched just, it oh. yeah that that's all um the uh the great healers of this village they they did a couple numbers on you and then we well, there's, we were, we were dealing with horseshoes, but anyways, as you're probably in a little bit of pain there, your face is saying something. Um, I got a donation. Um, I pat like the coins um, or bag of coins I stolen to emphasize that. I think we ought to get you some painkillers and then um, look about for uh, Simmons, the blacksmith, perhaps. Yes, you're gonna head up to uh, High Dudgeon and um, and and see what the deal was with Simmons up there. <laughs> Now, before you do so, um, can I have perception rolls from everybody, please? Failed, failed. I got a stand. Yedney is just in too much pain. You, okay. you can't focus. So, so Yedney has failed. Um, Sefford has failed. Uh, Mandelbrot has also failed. failed. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pattern here. We're <laughs> a failure. <laughs> and Bascule has succeeded. Okay. So, Bascule. Some of the women that have been gathered around watching and supervising the, the relocation of Siedney's arm back in its socket, uh, when, when they see the, the magician sort of pop it in there, one of them says, anyway, as I was saying before, we were so rudely interrupted. I know. That Renya... Right, that Renya. I, I'm telling you now, it's it's. Don't trust her. I don't. If you knew, if you knew what I'd seen all them years ago, if you knew, <gasps> scandalous, scandalous. I tell you, but my lips are sealed. They are. Oh yeah. Hearing this, um, can Bascule attempt to sort of slowly turn and and like join this this group and and oh at that point where the lips are sealed is oh do tell okay uh right perhaps a <laughs> deceit or an influence yes i think a i think influence um and you can augment that um you can augment it with your deceit, so that will give you plus sixteen. Uh, yeah, sixteen to my influence brings it to 
a 61. May I use a point of luck to reverse that to a 19? You may. You may. Thank you. Well, funnily enough, the, the, these two uh, fishwives, they, they sort of take you into their confidence. It's, it's almost as though you're one of them. Quite how you've managed to sort of vaguely away in there, you'll have to remember that for next time. But uh, yes, they're, 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 they're quite prepared to include you in the local gossip. So, but, uh, but yes, of course, my lips are sealed. Oh, no. I'm not one for gossip, me. No. Oh, but do tell. It, it sounds like a wonderful story. Oh, I couldn't possibly. I, could, I couldn't know. It, it, it would shock you to the very core. It would. You, you look like a man of a very sensitive disposition, if you don't mind my saying. And, uh, oh, no, I couldn't. I couldn't. Friends go, now oh, go on. Go on, Mildred. Go on. <laughs> go on. Nudging her. Oh, no, I couldn't. I couldn't. I, I just absolutely couldn't. What a shame. I'm, I'm sure that... Uh... Well, maybe it's not a good enough story. Oh, it's a fantastic story. It really is. So now at this point, you can give me um, an influence roll, which uh, she's going to try and oppose with a formidable willpower roll, because there's nothing more than she likes is to really have a good gossip. Uh, and this influence would be without the deceit, correct? Without deceit. This is just a straight influence. This is go on. You know you want to. 25 or 45. <sighs> okay. And we get a 50, which is a failure for her willpower. So you have succeeded. So she, she looks around conspiratorial, sort of ushers for you to, to sort of huddle in, you and the, the other couple of, uh, of ladies that she's talking with. She says, well, do you remember that summer about 10 years ago, it would be? Yeah, just before the games. You, 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 it was really hot that year. And she goes into a story about how she was... Uh, Coming back from um, from from her husband's Tam's um, charcoal furnace out out in the woods out out beyond that old yew tree you, you know the one you know where we were burning that year because all the wood was so good then got the fad I'd taken out his snack and I'd said you've got to get back because the games will be starting and who should I see there but Renya Renya was at large in the forest and she was dallying with somebody now Mildreth the lady telling this story didn't get a very good look at who she was dallying with but it was definitely not Runolf who was her husband to be it was somebody else they were kissing they were no oh, yes. and whispering oh, oh. whispering and kissing and kissing and whispering and she was wearing a crown of flowers, the hussy. Scandalous. It's scandalous. And then she had the brass balls to turn up afterwards like nothing had happened, cheering and skipping around and doing the dancing with Runolf. And I tell you that, Runolf, he knew nothing about it, but I did. Oh, I nearly said something then, but my Tam, my Tam, he said, don't you dare, Mildred, don't you dare shut your mouth off. Like, you don't, no, no, so I, I didn't, and I've kept that secret ever so long. I really have. But you won't tell anybody, will you? Uh, no, I can't repeat it. You're right. That was uh, a little too much for me. I'm I'm certainly a sensitive sort. I, I, I don't know if I could handle the suggestion of rumors of who that man might have been. G give, me a take petty, give me a take petty revenge roll. <laughs> <laughs> I failed it. You, you've actually succeeded it just. Um, Mildred certainly deserves to be repaid for spilling her guts quite so easily. Um, so maybe she ought to be a target at some point. But you've got a couple of quite interesting bits of information out of all of this. First of all, Mildred is, is the wife of Black Tam Shandy, who you've already had a run-in with. So she's the wife of a charcoal burner. Second, she has this secret about Renya, and it seems that Renya was was being unfaithful to her one true love 10 years ago, which was right before Low Dudgeon's streak of bad luck kicked in. So, well, who knows what happened, but you do know that Renya's husband run off, ran off with an exotic dancer from Is the very next year. 
Interesting. And hadn't even been married a year before up sticks and went off with the. Uh, well. So, there you are. Quite I'll suppress my urge to, to, to torment this lady for spilling the beans since I have bigger things to do. Uh, I'd, I'd like to remerge with my, my group. Um, Certainly, mate. And suggest that I, I think we ought to be going now that we've uh, got a friend. And um, has anybody got him a mug of ale? He's still making that face. Yedney, are you okay? Somebody has, has pressed a, a, a mug of um, apple cider to uh, to suggest his lips. He's right hand. Get this down. Get this down. <laughs> Do you the power of good? It does. Oh, thank you. And and, and then so Yedney with his left hand, which is shaking from the pain anyway, <laughs> yes. is working his way through this tankard of, of, of local cider in quite like large gulps oh. between winces of pain that the gulp is then causing in his shoulder. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so that, that the shoulder will get better over the course of the next few days, I am sure. Um, but so you um, you have a horseshoe. You got two horseshoes. Um, something magically has gone pop around the village. You're not sure what, um, and you got a bit more information about what may have happened in Low Dudgeon's past. So, are you carrying on with your plan to travel up to High Dudgeon and uh, to compare the horseshoes with the work of Semence, the blacksmith? I think. I think. Yeah, go for it. Sorry, go on. Mm -hmm. I, I was just going to say, I think um, Mandelbrot um, convinced um, Serfod at one point, who mm. wanted to see the char go and see the charcoal burners, um, to almost like deviate. <laughs> to join yes. him with the um, horseshoe um, escapade. So um, Serfod will actually mention it uh, uh, again to Mandelbrot and sort of like say, oh, go, uh, if they're going somewhere else, can we go and see the charcoal burners now? No, Serfod, we, we, we said, my friend, my, my, my large friend, my, I am still confused mighty. how you got that mighty friend. That yeah. is true. You are a mighty, Serfod the mighty, the mighty Serfod. Um, how, how you managed to get the horseshoe from the cottage but bearing in mind and look look at your horseshoe and look at my horseshoe see how they have the same same mark the v that's a v that there and there and the same little lines going down here uh, we need to find who has made these and then at least we can find out who's been putting them around all of it's us it's really important well i think many may be better than me how far away is high dudgeon from low dudgeon in day about three, three hours about five miles right so it's going to take you a couple of hours to and it's uphill as well mm. so it's going to take you a couple of hours to, to walk there but it's, it's certainly walking distance if you were to take hollyhock and ride then you'd, you'd <laughs> have that time from but surely if uh, the, with, the, with, with the with the goings on today Everyone will be here, including the blacksmith from, from High Dungeon. Surely he'll be in the meadows having a, having a fun time. Perhaps we could ask around to see if he's around here first before trekking all the way to High Dungeon and back. Yep, you can, you can do that. Somebody can um, ask around. Who wants to have a crack at that? Uh, it's a straightforward perception role. That's cool. You, 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 you <laughs> think Pascal's happy to wander around because he doesn't but really you, want to you, walk yeah. five miles. So uh, he'll, he'll do a walk around. Here is his perception. 58 of 66. Okay. Um, asking around uh, a, a few of the people, has anybody seen Semence around here? Is he watching the games? Um, it turns out that he isn't. Um, Semence used to be part of the tug of war team that took part in the games. Uh, but he he retired a couple of years ago. He hasn't been down here for some time, actually. He uh, keeps his distance from Low Dudgeon these days. Yeah, that checks out. Um, I'll, I'll thank people for their time and make a comment like, ah, I just really need to get my, my branding irons fixed. I'll let you go. I'll, I'll bring that information back to the group. But what, what uh, do you want that blacksmith? We've got a perfectly good blacksmith just over there. Oh, well, you know, I can't argue with that one. I'll go, I'll go check him out. It, it, maybe low dungeons are actually better than that high dungeon, you know. Of course they are. I, I'm not 
I, I, I was, if the blacksmith here didn't make the horseshoes, could we not just assume that they were made at high dudgeon? Well, Sephiroth, I never even thought. We haven't even looked at the blacksmith here. Yeah. So maybe if we quickly go to him, and and and, and what what's what's his name? What's what's blacksmith's name? Did you find out, Bascule? Knacker. <laughs> Knacker. Um, and I didn't really have a good lie prepared for those villagers since so they didn't even laugh at my jokes either. So it's kind of let's upsetting. go and see, let's go and see Knacker. And then, yeah, and then, I, and then I didn't really want to walk bonus. all the way. I feel, I feel we need to pay the charcoal bonus a visit. I'm Look, surprised. It, 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 the, 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 char the charcoal burners have paid you for the apology, Sephard. You, you see this bag of gold that um, Basku gave you? It was an apology. They said, we're sorry, have some gold, have many drinks on me. <laughs> and gave you some gold. So... Uh, so, so these... Florence, sorry, some Florence. Florence. So, so let's let's go. Let's go to the blacksmith. We'll have a quick look at our local blacksmith here, and if the if the horseshoes don't match up to to the ones we've got here, we can just go along the road for a little bit and and, and see see this um Simmons and see what if so he has just let quality. out a huge sigh here. He's he's getting a little bit. Sephard, you do need the exercise, you know, all the food, he, no no he, exercise. He just flexes with his um, size and strength. Ah, uh, it's leg day, Sephard. Uh, yeah, he, he flexes his legs as well, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, given, um, if there's one person that doesn't need exercise in the whole of Madam Men of his festive fellas, it's it's Sephard the so, Mighty. Yeah. Fact, his muscles are bigger today than they appear to be yesterday. You're pretty sure they've grown another inch. And that's just with Did, lifting Mandelbrot up and down. Up and down. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, might from from here. the mightiness quotient has definitely increased. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where are you going? High Dudgeon or the local Blackie? We'll try the local Blackie first. First, yeah, shortness first and then go for the trick next. Okay, right. Well, the local blacksmith is called Necker. Um, his workshop is just opposite the, the tavern where you've all been before. So you know exactly where to go. Uh, because there are so many people in High Dudgeon at the moment, um, there's quite a steady trade going through his workshop with horses needing to be shod, things to be repaired, you know, cartwheels to be fixed. He does all that kind of work, you know, he puts fresh banding on cartwheels, all this sort of stuff. He's a, a bit of a, a jack of all trades. Um, so there is, a, it's actually quite busy. There's a line of horses all waiting to be reshod. Um, you can hear clanging coming from inside. You can smell the smoke coming out. There's clearly a, a forge going full tilt in there. Um, lots of people sort of knocking around or, or waiting for, for work to be done. Um, you can see the blacksmith um, inside working away over the anvil. Um, he's got sort of a pile of horseshoes and other things around. He's taking them out of the fire, whacking them away with his hammer, stopping, pausing, sizing things up, making adjustments, um, plunging it into water. And then he hands the horseshoe over to a, a youngish girl, probably about 13 or 14 years old. Um, and she is then tending to the customers that are waiting outside. So she brings out um, a, a set of horseshoes that uh, Naka has just finished while you're sort of standing and watching what's going on. Um, she expertly uh, goes to the, the hooves of the horse that's waiting in line, um, gets the right tools, prizes out the old nails, trims the hoof, and does all the sort of blacksmithing thing. And she's the one that's fitting the, the shoes that Naka has made. Um, somebody, does anybody have blacksmithing or anything close to that as a skill? Mm, no, not me. It really no. does. Uh, okay, if, if somebody, uh, it's, nobody complains at all about the fit of the horseshoes. There seems to be minimal work going on here as uh, the, this young girl deftly fits mm. the shoes onto to each of the horses. Uh, but the blacksmith doesn't really pay you any attention at all. The girl has a line of customers that she's working with and you're kind of at the back of the line unless you want to try and jump the queue. Yeah. 
Um, Mandelbrot will turn to Bascule and say, Bascule, my friend, wh why don't you take this hoof here, the, the, this horseshoe, over to the young girl and ask her if she knows who made it? Because you see the little the little V in the top here? That hopefully will hope that she, she might know that, that sign. Um, if it's one of hers, brilliant. If not, she might know who it is. So, so if you wouldn't mind, because you're you're such a more charming. I pander to the crowds. You pander to people. So you know, do, if if you wouldn't mind, sir. Well, that that is true. But uh, in my in uh, to make me feel more comfortable, I'd like it if Surfy came came along. Oh, by all means, by all means. I mean, it, it's don't worry. I have a courtesy have still. A shadow. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it keep me safe. Uh, and, and while we're walking along up to the girl, hopefully there's a little bit of space uh, that, uh, that Basquiel will mention to Surfy. I'm surprised you don't want to see the that Simmons guy more, seeing as he was a ex-lover of the love of your life. Right. Um, I think that we we have to have a, a little play on the passion here. Yeah, um, definitely. If, if not loud enough, first of all. Um, I think let's uh, let's have your take petty revenge. Give me a roll against that. Um, Ian, would you please resist with your fall in love easily? Sure. I got a f 57 of 70. And I fumble my roll. Oh, okay. Right, so you fumbled the roll. So you've actually failed uh, miserably as well. And obviously, the, the rebuffing that Renya has continually given you, um, it's had an effect because you, you, you're actually not that needled by, um, by Bascule's uh, clearly ham-fisted attempts to raise your jealousy. You know Renya will come back in her own time. It's just, it's just a matter of when that time is. Yeah, I know. Sephard has just look down as at uh, Bas um, Bascal and just say, to, just sort of like say, true love, she will come back to me. I feel it in my heart. Absolutely. And because you fumbled that roll with 100, your fall in love easily skill goes up by one point and it's going up immediately by one point. Nice. Boom. It just strengthens your desire even more. She will that come back to me. <laughs> it, it just it kind of glances up at Seraphod and, and just shrugs. Well, this the, this huge that. shadow is now looming yeah. over the, uh, the, the, the blacksmith's assistant, uh, who's busy sort of trying to deal with the customer. Uh, the, the customer sort of looks up and she turns and sort of looks round and comes sort of face to petrol muscle with uh, with Sefford and her chin sort of raises and she looks up. Oh, mister. Uh, d down here, actually, this is my friend. Uh, well, we just had a quick question. We got some uh, horses. Hello. And... Uh, hello. And uh, it, it, uh, we were just wondering where these horses came from because uh, we have a, you know, our madam is asking for them. I, I hold it out. Um, we've, so got lots, can see. we've got lots inside. We, do, we, we sell them. Yes, but Madam, we're not Madam, buying. We sell them. We make them as well. I know. We want more like this. Otherwise, Madam is going to have this big guy beat me, and I don't really want that to happen. All I just want to know is where we can get more of these. Yeah, are you going to beat horses. him? I'll beat him. Yeah, he's already yeah. done it today. He made me eat dirt or yesterday. Okay. Um, she she takes the horseshoe and uh, she's going to give it a, a cursory glance over. A bascule thinks she's going to lie. To him. All right, that was a 53, and she, so she, she looks at the horse, she goes, are you pulling me leg? That's one of ours, that is. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Are you sure? About yeah. That? Yeah, because yeah, the maker's mark it's and everything. The, it's got Knacker's mark on it there, that's Knacker's mark. That is, and she sort of points to the sign that's um, above. It says "Blacksmith" or "Knacker the Blacksmith," and this is his maker's <laughs> mark has been branded, in, which is an sounds like an instruction. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no. 
Yeah, so I think I'd had a couple of libations when I was writing. <laughs> <laughs> and so this isn't a maker's mark from somewhere else. And Basquiat will no. give her a very suspicious eye. No, it's quite high quality, that. He'll probably know the horse he made that for. Well, Knacker, he does that. He's got a memory like... Um, like like a really good memory person. Huh, well that, that does sound impressive. <laughs> Thank you, little maybe, girl. Maybe you could uh, let me go in and, and ask him. Uh, oh, he's to... dead busy. He'll tell me off if yeah. I go and disturb him. There's clanging coming from the from the blacksmith. And, and then the... Where are you, girl? Get in here! I can't do all this myself. I've got to go, she says, and quite yeah. bashfully, she has to leave the customer behind. She she flits into the uh, to, to answer the call from uh, from Naka himself, leaving you standing there. And the customer looking at you, uh, go, you just pushed in then. That was my turn. That was. Yeah, well, you don't Except want to do like both of us. And, but yeah, but it's all right. No, no, I'm quite yeah. happy for you to just push in. Yeah, I don't mind. Please don't hurt me. All right, Surfy, let's go back and... Uh, everybody should have a surf hold, I, I tell you, everybody should have one. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, I'll try my and, best to lead Surf on back to the group. I, as as we're walking back, um, Sefer did just say... So he... So Naka made the uh, horseshoes. Yeah, I guess it wasn't Simmons. Where did we get that blatant lie from... Who, who tricked us? You, you decided that it may well be Semmons, A, because he's a blacksmith, mm. B, because he was courting Renya, and he was one of the last people that came into the cottage. That's right. Uh, from outside the village. Um, and so you put two and two together and got 48. And, uh... Yes. <laughs> we lied to ourselves. Shame on us, Sir Fod. Sefford. Surfy. So their own blacksmith is putting these up around low dungeon well that's a that's a clever idea I, I think that if you were trying not to get caught Sefford, then you would buy evidence that can't really be attached to you uh, i mean we can both be sure that high dungeon is cheating here so that would be a good move on their part they really just want to ruin my act don't they okay Our act. magic rolls insight roll uh so you any perception roll please <gasps> oh, um, I have a 49 out of 30. I I'm 49 players. out of 39. So I, I got very easy. Yeah. 49ers. Yeah, what is it with these 49? <laughs> I yeah. know. Uh, that's... It's just perception rolls in, Will. Well, I just can't <laughs> do them. What you say? Mandelbrot and um, Saffron got 92 on the willpower each. And you both got forty nines here as well. That that is mm. that is that's right. The, the, the chances of that happening, I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you a luck point back. <gasps> um, Can I roll as well? See what I get. You realise that your, your luck points did refresh for this session yeah, anyway. Yes. But, yeah. yeah, I'm going to give you one. You, you get one luck point back. Who's going to have it? Well, who's going to be the custodian of this joint luck point for you? <laughs> um, I think Jedney should have it. That's that's very kind. Thank you. Yeah, you you you, you, you Jedney it needs rough, it. Think, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He definitely needs, Jedney needs it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you have got the luck point. Um, okay, that's fair enough. So, what what's your plan of action now? Um, Mandelbrot. After I'm assuming that that um, Sephiroth and um, uh, Basquiat have, have, have told him what's happened with the um, blacksmith's assistant. He, he, he'll be like, that, that, "That's you saw it all. You, you were all yeah. there. You all saw what went on." That's very unusual. Why would their own blacksmith be making these, and then somebody's putting them round to curse the place? <laughs> Zephyr says I, I, to make low dudgeon lose. Well, that much is true. But why would somebody who lives here? want them to lose unless it is another party here doing something completely unbeknown but, so for did, says, just uh, Sefo, did you recognize a girl so for, the, so the for just so like says i think we just need to stop it yeah I, I, rather just, than wondering why 
I know. We, we do need to stop it. But Let's just you stop it. Did you recognise the girl? Was she part of that group you saw dancing around in the field last night or the night before? Do, do I recognise? Did I recognise her? Please say perception, because the answer would be no. Dancing <laughs> around in the field. You're, oh, you're, oh, the dim figure in the distance. Yeah, yes, the, the, the yes, group the, dancing the, like Morris dancers or uh, some kind of druic ri ritual. I tell you what, yeah, I will let you make me a perception roll, um, but I want this at a hard, so two thirds normal. I, I I don't think it it matters. What <laughs> <laughs> you might get one. Oh, oh, oh the bloody duck! Look at that! Yeah, you know, like, it, not it, it, only it, bulging what? biceps, <laughs> bulging right. eye muscles. You cast your mind back to the previous evening when uh, your, your memory is jogged. It takes a lot to jog your memory once it goes in a certain direction. Yeah. Um, you're thinking back to, to, to that strange figure that was watching the, the cottage from uh, the other side of the meadow. And you, you're sort of looking around thoughtfully. Oh, yeah, I remember. Oh, there she is. And you see a figure that you don't know why. But it's very reminiscent. Maybe it's the glow that's around them. But coming out of the tavern, or rather coming out of the stables behind the tavern, is a figure that uh, it, 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 suddenly you are reminded of that person that you saw. Yeah, Sefa, uh, uh, sorry, he's look, looking around, sees it, and just says, That was them. One of, that's that's one of them and this sort of like heads off you know as if he's announced it and then he he's off to okay. follow or intercept whichever is easiest to do uh so Edney will sort of snap his head around see the direction that sephard's pointed and set off on and and follow as well no donkey oh, I... please say yes no 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 <laughs> not on a donkey <laughs> No, Les you're not Leslie's the in the doghouse. You are definitely all in foot, all in foot. Now, the the smithy is right opposite the town. Hmm. Got the ray, the main road that kind of separates you. So there's not that much distance, uh, but he's coming out of the rear of the tavern. Uh, this figure um, is, he cloaked, he, is he cloaked and hooded, or he's definitely wearing a cloak. The the hood is pulled back, and the the cloak it's got a certain shimmer to it. I mean, it's a bright summer's day. But the cloak seems to be shimmering even more. It's like it's it, it it's almost amplifying the sunlight around it. So far, it does and what's look more, he's billowing with an incredible elegance behind the figure as this figure moves quite deftly and quickly. Um, and the figure is at, comes out of the tavern and is heading down the pathway towards the sawmill where you went yesterday when you're in pursuit of Renya. Um, Sephard is definitely going to pursue and intercept if possible. Maybe if I or, could get behind the person and just slam a, a meat hook of a hand on the person's shoulder. Okay. Um, um, right. It's so... <laughs> Mandelbrot's going, oh, no, no. <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm trying to, I'm seeing this, this shimmering cloak walking away and I'm thinking, what is it? What, what is making this thing shimmer? And, and, and Mandelbrot wants to just try to project his, his senses to see, see if he can focus yeah. in on what, it, what this is and see if he understands it. Um, you can give me another insight role for that. Hmm. No idea. <laughs> it's a cloak. It's, a cloak. it's you, you've just seen Sefford take off like a row of an aqueduct, and he he's sort of trying to catch up with this fleet moving figure. You get you catch a glimmer of uh, the, the this sort of sunlight, sort of ref almost reflecting off this cloak, sort of disappearing around the corner and heading down the lane. So Sefford is is off. Um, right. You're going to try and catch up with this guy, mm. is that right? Yes. You want to try and catch up with him. Okay, right. Well, um, either stealth or athletics to see if you can do it. Um, I'm going to oppose it with uh, this character's uh, perception. 
Okay, so I'll go with um, athletics and 27 out of 45. Okay, right. I've got a 90, so I've actually failed. Um, Aha. The figure is not aware of you coming up behind them. Um, as you get closer, you can see that the figure is quite tall. Not as tall as you, but tall, um, very finely boned. Um, long golden hair is streaming out uh, from above the, the collar of this, this cloak that's, that actually looks like it's made from sunlight now that you are closer to him, um, walking very, very purposefully. But he suddenly sort of paused because a shadow is now moving over him. The cloak is still brilliantly shiny, but uh, you now have the opportunity to slam a hand down on his shoulder. Yeah, if you will. and I go to try to put my left hand on his right shoulder. So once I've got it on, I can turn him. So he's facing me. Would, would you like, a, what would you like? Please, can um, I use I'm... my unarmed combat, which is called... No, oh. use my combat style, which is called, do you think you're hard enough? You can. <laughs> an arm, sister. Come, say, on but... you Come on, if you think you're hard enough. Yeah, go on. Seventy-nine out of eighty-five. Oh, okay, a good roll. Right, so mm. I'm going. Oppose your that. Hand out, it's clamped down on his shoulder with a a, a a reasonable amount of force to hold. You're not obviously trying to hurt him. You're just no. trying to stop. And, and attract his attention. Um, let's see if his evade roll is going to be good enough to get away from this. Oh, <laughs> he's not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, his evade is 74, so he's failed that. And uh, even so, he would even if he had succeeded, it wouldn't have been as good. As, not as, as good your, as me. <laughs> your, your hand closes around him, um, he stops. There is a, a a loud gasp as he spun neatly around to look at you. And, that, and yeah, I, I assume that that's what you wish to do. Yeah, and Severed, uh, Severed, normal one will just um, eye him up and down, um, almost like um, estimating his threat value um, if need be. But he once he sort of like looked up and down, he's just he's just sort of like. And says, I've seen you before. Oh, he says, the man that you're looking at is very, very fair skinned. He's got a long angular face, um, incredibly good looking, um, something oddly inhuman about him. His features are just a little bit too perfect, a little bit too symmetrical. Uh, the fact that he's clothed in sunlight by the looks of it. Um, he's wearing a very flouncy white shirt. And when you take a look at it, you can see that the, the frills of the shirt are actually made of cobwebs, which are still being spun by the many spiders that are working on it. He's absolutely speechless as you turn him round and peer down at him. All he can do is move his lips expressively. Do, does Sefford sort of like think that there's... Um... Uh, magic at work here. Yeah, he, 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 I was thinking he has a folklore skill. You could give me a folklore role. Uh, yeah, I'll allow you to do that. Um, thirty-one out of fifty-two. That this this creature is undoubtedly a, a magical being of some kind. Too perfect. Yeah, he, he sort of like says, uh, "I've seen you before. You were." Frolicking in the fields. So what if I was? What are you doing? There's a little echo to his voice. <laughs> yeah. He's speaking down the top. Oh, I can actually put that echo <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we use for dream sequences. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he was sort of like, um, so he says, you, you were follow. what were you doing? I should ask what you were doing with her. With her. And kindly unhand me, you brute. And uh, Sephod sort of like says, do you mean the, the love of my life? 
a wry smile crosses his face. He splutters a laugh at you. Uh, the love of your... You? You? The mortal? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And what? Now, fall in love then, easily. And if, if I... <laughs> I feel that I need to hit him. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. He has just started to move his fingers in a, a sort of a very magical way, and he's muttering something very quickly under his breath uh, while he's chuckling away to himself about you being in love with whoever he's talking about. Um, but you, you may give me a role to oppose my 75 success uh, of your fall in love easily to uh, to see if you can actually do something about it okay, before yeah. nice. the bell goes off. Okay, uh, this is my fall in love ease. <laughs> can I have another fumble? <laughs> How many fumbles is that that you've had on this roll now? That's you, this is the Two second one tonight. today. <laughs> you, you, you give me a hundred plus soon, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, it doesn't it doesn't go up by another oh. one. Increased it ever. Okay, right. So uh no, you you find yourself having to take a step backwards uh when it suddenly dawns on you that you're probably talking about he's probably talking about Renya. Um his fingers waggle, he has muttered something, and then with an elegant sweep of his cloak. He's bathed in sunlight that absolutely dazzles your eyes. And as you step back, blink and look, there is no sign of him. Sefer did this sort of like uh, look, look around and sort of like check his hand that uh, this sort of like um, turn, turn to um, Jedney, who I, I think was. Um, yes, uh, so Jedney was, uh, was following. Um, yeah. Hasn't probably got quite got there because he's been walking gingerly, and every so often he said, "The arm, watch the arm," as he like bumps through people in the crowd <laughs> and that sort of thing. Damn it, the <laughs> arm! Can't you see my sling? <laughs> and then, um, and um, then arrives probably at that point that the tap's gone poof. Yeah, um, yes, Sefford. Sefford is just like turned to Jedney and say, "He vanished. Some kind of, you know, hocus pocus fairy magic." Oh no, not more of that. Yeah. He he looked a little bit too perfect. Almost like it, well not human. Not human. Well he came from the um stable, yeah. Is that where Yes, he, he was coming out of the he was coming out of the tavern by the stable entrance rather than the main entrance to the tavern. Right. So almost like a back like yeah. a back entrance to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sefford is just sort of like says, he came out of the tavern, but not from the front door. Get, go and get what the was, others. Uh, yeah. Um, and then Sir Jedney will turn around and again, cursing people as they bump into his arm in the crowd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, Sefford's going to go... back to the others too. Sefford's going to go round to the back and he's... He's not very good at um, interpersonal relationships or anything like that, but he, he does have a courtesy skill. So I'm wondering whether or not I can engage this skill to almost like knock on the door or engage with anybody who's, you know, inside at the back, maybe one of the barmaids or um, the cook if they're there too. And what, what he wants to do is sort of like almost like bringing into conversation that he just met somebody leaving and whether or not they know who it was. Okay. Yeah, you, you don't need to roll for that. Oh, that's, nice. Uh, that's my that's handsome okay. good looks, just the trick. Your, 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 your impressive physique. Because... My, my eloquence of 76. <laughs> okay, so the person that's uh, that just happens to be slopping out um, as you, you approach the back door. Back door opens. Uh, there's the, she's the, the, the landlord's wife, 
um, Ursula. Uh, she's got a, a wooden pail of water that she sort of throws out into the, the street, slops over your, your boots and sort of puddles around you. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. Oh, and and she's impressive musculature. And she immediately starts preening her hair and making sure it's all tucking stray locks back up in, inside her mop cap. And uh, Can I just say, I am not making a fall in love easily well, at this point. No, 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 no. <laughs> and he, he also sort of like, um, he, he's quite, you know, he, he knows how to interact with politeness, Strong. you know, um, and he sort of like, sort of like says, no, 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 no worry at all. Let, let me carry your bucket for you. Oh, please. Yeah. It's ever so heavy. Yeah, it's just, uh, I've just bumped into someone leaving here, and, well, he bumped into me, and I, I seem to have lost my um, purse with some money in. Um, he came from out of here. Do you know who he was? She sort of looks around. Um... Lots of people come in here. Oh, you poor dear. Oh, you, you you must feel terrible. Why don't, why don't you come in and, and let me help? Yeah, let, let me fill up your bucket for you. That's not a euphemism for anything. Can I just say that? I, I, I know how Medivac's mind works at this point. And he, he was sort of like... He's going to go to the well to do that, which is where she was going to be going. Yeah, and so she, he sort of like, uh, sort of like holds the... Um, bucket for and he sort of like signals to the the well and he might even sort of like um you know put his arm out if she wants to accompany him um he, he, oh does she absolutely she seizes your arm with a vice-like grip yeah and he's just sort of like tenses his bicep a little it bit feels better than i thought <laughs> they're like steel bullets yeah and he sort of like goes on and he's sort of like making conversation and he, balls. yeah and he sort of like says yeah i i work out you should you co should come and see it when it's covered in oil it tends to glisten a lot especially there, in this sunshine there's um there's a thud because she's just <laughs> <laughs> She's had a fit of the vapors, uh, <laughs> but she recovers quite quite quickly. He's, he's all like, says, Let, <laughs> "Did you say oil?" Yeah, you know, may, I'm always looking for somebody in the crowd to help with the application. So if maybe there's a, there's a small whimper from <laughs> yeah. somewhere. So the person who, who left just a few minutes ago. Quite a handsome chap, not as handsome as me. Wearing a fancy cloak, I think. All right, let's see what she remembers. So uh, let me give a roll. Okay. Um, she, she vaguely remembers somebody. A, a cloak, you say? Yeah. Really bright one. Yeah, shimmer. Yeah, blonde hair. Smelling of lavender. Well, as he did. yeah. Very, you know, flamboyant. She thinks she did, but she's not quite sure. Did you not see him? I certainly smelled lavender when I was mopping the floor. Mm. But I don't think I quite saw, But I did see something. It was like a shimmer. Yeah, a shimmer. And have you smelt lavender be before? In the, not in, in the bar. No, no, it normally smells of sweat and shit. Yeah. But no, not normally lavender. He, as he's doing this, he's um, putting the bucket into the well and picking it up. And uh, is that full enough for oh, you? Oh, oh, no, no. She, she stops. She, have you got a coin? Uh, you got a big bag of coins. Yeah. He's sort of like... Uh, reaches into his britches and takes out two and says, here's a florin for you. Oh, thank you very much. And she tosses it into the well and then sort of indicates that you should do the same thing. And wish. Are we wishing? You can if you want. And he, she said, he says, I know what I'll be wishing for. And just sort of like winks and flicks. He just fainted again. <laughs> 
You're right. And she, he sort of like cradles her head as he. So when, when she comes round, <laughs> so funny, says, uh, probably shirtless, just sort of like leaning over uh, very close, and just says, Are you all right? I don't know. Let me. I feel all funny. Can you walk? I don't think so. You might have to carry me. Not a problem, he says. And just cradles her up. Um, so her head can sort of like lean on his shoulder. You know, and he's just sort of like holds her in one arm and then picks up the pail as well. And just... She, sort of... every, she's managed to get both her arms around your neck in a very, very tight embrace that she's probably not going to let you release. <laughs> yeah, they say, hold on tight. Oh, I'm not letting go, don't you worry. <laughs> and he sort of like take her back to the um, the kitchen area and sort of like says, now, you get on where, where you're working. Don't forget to come and join him and watch my show. Because oh, I will. I, I will, will be I'll... looking for somebody for the oil application. Oh. If, yeah. And that one person could be you. And he, she, he just goes, bop. On, on her nose not bash no, no. <laughs> yeah give me a brawn Rob <laughs> yes. my brawns <laughs> 27 out of 100 okay um, you control the power that you put like said, to you it's just a light touch on the nose affectionate and playful to most people it's like a jackhammer yeah to sort of <laughs> Sure. Uh, but you, uh, you, you manage to sort of realise your own strength and tap her gently. She staggers and whimpers and faints again, but it's not through the force of the blow. She, she will be there to watch you preparing to be oiled. Yeah. So the the back of the the back of the tavern is that sort of like a kitchen, and then it goes through to the kitchen, scullery, all that kind of stuff, and then you've got the big main public bar. That, so, uh, so either this guy was in this area and left or in the tavern and came out the back way. That's what Sefford yeah. is sort of like um, assuming. Um, so he, he wants to go round. He's not going to go through the back. He's going to um, hand over the bucket and go round um, as if he's going into the tavern. Okay. Uh, uh, and when he goes in, he wants to have a quick look around and see who's actually in there he's he's trying to um ascertain if he recognizes anybody um anybody new different anybody familiar in there that he can sort of like maybe start to connect up with this shimmering guy who who okay. left all right so before we we get on to that what yeah. are the rest of you you uh you, you kind of watched all of this going mm. on and the uh the not so gentle or subtle seduction of um, of Ursula, the uh, the lady of the the tavern. Uh, I'll go ahead, Medivac. No, no, go for it. I was going to say, Basquiat, uh, probably assuming that uh, his friend's going to be back after chasing some random person, or or a little more likely a lady that he saw. It's not really too too concerned about it. He's going to be, be preparing for the walk out of town by going to the bar and getting as much cider as he can fit into his belly. Okay. All right. So you're already in the tavern itself. Uh, where's Siedney? Um, so Siedney would have arrived, watch, um, probably walked back with um, Sephard, told the, the, um, mm -hmm. the others that we think that the chap came out of the tavern and he would have gone into the tavern as oh, well right. so you, you, to you try and find more information about him. Yeah. Okay, so you were all assembled in the tavern yep. um, uh, while all this stuff with uh, with Sefford and, uh, and Ursula is happening on the outside. So, um, okay. Um, inside the tavern, the, most people are out watching the games or, or enjoying the festivities over in the meadow, but there are a few people in here. Um, a quick glance around shows that a couple of the tables are occupied and in one of the alcoves not far from the fireplace uh, you catch a sight of the charcoal burners who have gathered around um, they they spent the morning uh, up near the beer tent they've uh, now decided that it's that they, they need to do some talking in private so they've come down and uh, they're sort of huddling around 
Um, there's so, somebody indicates that uh, another round of, of drink should be got in. Uh, one of them goes for his purse, looks down, pats, starts looking frantically all over the place. Uh, I've been thieved. Oh. And I step away for one <laughs> one minute. Oh, it's, it's not quite as bad as that. Uh, th their sort of size and uh, it's decided amongst the charcoal burners that uh, somebody else will stand this round. But uh, this particular charcoal burner, the one that Vasquez will just happen to have uh, so nimbly lifted from, is looking daggers all around. When I get hold of whoever took my money, I'll string him up by his small intestine. <clears throat> Absolutely furious he is. So there's only a few people in the bar. Charcoal burners being one of the groups, um, and there's the the landlord sort of idly wiping down the bar, looking at the stock and so forth, and uh, sort of glances up, nods in your direction when you come in, and goes back to his work. Um, Madam Bob will go. We'll, 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 we'll gesture into the bar and, and go. Three, three ales, my good man. Three ales for us. For a parched voice that's been singing all morning, and then ale is heading your group. So please, three ales to make us happy and replete. So you'd like the good stuff, would you? No, 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 no. We want ales that will be nice, but not too costly, but but better than. Than the, the, the <laughs> other Man, stuff. Mandelbrot, we're, we're in cider, a cider town. They're going to upcharge the, the ale to the highest of heavens. Uh, so, yeah. uh, Mandelbrot means we'll, we'll take the, the, the cider. Uh, what's appropriately he, priced? He goes and draws several mugs of cider, which he plonks down, uh, charges you an extortionate price for it because uh, you're out of town. Um, but you have the coin to be able to pay for it. Um, what Mandelbrot wants to do while he's sat there, he doesn't really want to touch it at the moment, but he wants to be looking at this horseshoe above the um, the bar. Yep. That we, we found earlier. Absolutely. Um, again, he wants to just, without saying anything to anybody else, he wants to be looking at this, and again, he wants to be tugging at that little bit of the edge of this bit of magic that's holding it on there. And he wants to try to um, pull it away again, or release the magic from it by going into it. And 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 okay. he he just wants to break it away. He's willpower. He's, he's concentrating. He really wants to. Yeah. But then he wants a beer afterwards. Ordinary. The, the the horseshoe is still there. You can see it just sort of glinting behind some of the bottles and so forth. Yeah. Uh, Ordinarily, you have to be in physical contact with it. But right. given that you've established a relationship with mm -hmm. the one, you, 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 you've helped in, uh, in removing a couple, I will allow you to attempt the willpower roll. You can augment it with your fairy magic, but it's going to be formidable. So if you do your augmentation first, then halve the roll. And that will give you your, your chance to succeed here. Sure. Um, you lost me there. Did the augmentation in half? Take, take your willpower. Yeah. Oh, you right. I'll just it with your fairy magic. Yeah. And then yeah, which half. is like So I got 60, 61 and 66, which is a, um, a standard. Okay, so it's not quite good enough to, no. uh, to, to, to move the horseshoe. Uh, you reach out yeah. your mind. It, it's sort of not quite. It yeah. just will not shift. No, you're going to have to get up close and personal with it. Yeah, I will knock off a point. But the, bar, the bartender is sort of looking at you. Are you feeling okay? I'm sorry, my good man. I've, I've just had a, a terrible experience outside. There was there was this this, this the, you know strange things happening. It's just it's it's the fun of the fair. These these things these things affect us. So, um, I was just pining for a drink. My apologies. He, he pushes the, the uh, gingerly pushes the cider towards you. This will clear up your, sort you out all right, it will. 
Oh, I certainly hope so, my good man, because if it does, I'll be back for more. Well, good. Just don't collapse in the tavern. It's not good for business, please. No, I'll try not to. <laughs> and with that, okay. Mandelbrot will pick it up and have a, a sip and yes. All right, so, um, Sefford, you've, you've arrived. You can can I just, going Yeah, can I just add, uh, have I smelt lavender somewhere before in this adventure? Because I have down on my piece of paper the word lavender circled. Yeah, you, you got a, a waft of lavender from the, across the meadow previously. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so I, I'm going into the um, tavern, yeah. Okay, well, the other three are in there. Um, they've uh, they've got some mugs of cider. The charcoal burners are occupying one of the, uh, the booths uh, over by the fireplace. Uh, they're, one of them is looking very, very angry indeed, uh, accusing high dudgeoners, it must be high dudgeoners, of theft. They're not just cheats, they're thieves as well. Bastards. Why don't we just go and get them now? We know where they are says the angry one that's had his pocket picked. So they're, t they're talking about high dudgeoners then, and they're obviously mm -hmm. the low dudgeoners, um, charcoal. Is it, are the other three in the, in the tavern together? Yep, there's a group of four of them sitting here. So there's Black Tam, uh, the one that uh, was pickpocketed earlier by Bascule, and a couple of their friends. And then Jed um, they've actually raised their voices, or the one that's been pickpocketed is so angry he's raised his voice, and Black Tam is going, Shush, shush, fool, you don't know who's listening. And as you walk in, Sephard, um, you'll see Mandelbrot will raise his hand to say and wave you over. Now, Sephard will go, go over and he says, he'll relate what he uh, what happened um, out with the the fairy magic um, person, and so like reiterate that this is the the second time he's um, smelt lavender, and he he will gradually become um, noticeably irritated about the charcoal burners as they get um, noisier and more sort of like um, threatening, and he he'll say like say to the three of them, so what what you what you're doing here, just drinking. I thought we had a job to do. Oh, I thought it would be good for that long walk up to have a little bit of cider in my belly, you know. And well, you, you said he was wearing sunlight. Hey, uh, Basket will try and uh, gesture to the the barkeep uh, if he's near. Mm -hmm. uh, you you ever seen a guy wearing a cloak like sunlight? Cloak like sunlight. Uh, Long hair, I guess. Scratches his head. Looks a bit puzzled. But today, like. Yeah, Se uh, Sefo did the say. Yeah, recently. Left out the back of your tavern. Standing up if he needs to. <laughs> <laughs> Scratches his head, sort of looks around. Well, so you should say that because there was. There was somebody here while I, I felt, I felt the urge to go and, and, and check how many pieces of coal we had in the scut. I've never done that before. And I was sure I caught something out of the corner of my eye behind the barrier. And there was like a glint of sunlight. And it was like there was something. And I thought, why has Ursula put some lavender in the cider kegs? Why would she do that? That was, it was awfully peculiar, I'll say that. But no, I didn't actually see anybody. Yeah, so I had to say, where, so where were you when you when this happened? We sort of points out to the fireplace. I said, well, I felt the need to go over there and count the coals. Why did I want to count the bloody coals? And then I saw the glint and I could smell the lavender. And I thought to myself, Ursula's put some lavender on the cider keg. So I came to look and see what it was. And I saw the shimmy. It was like... And then you came in. He, he'll just sort of like, Sefa just sort of like, so he, he, he's, he's sensing that he's almost like backtracking now where, where this shimmering guy has come from. So he's now put together that he came, obviously was in the tavern, he thinks. It would seem so, yeah. Yeah, and then distracted um, this guy to almost like um, get out. So he, he's going to go up um, to the... Um, the, the arguing um is there 
there's charcoal burners. Is there anybody else? Is the tavern full, or is there anybody else? No, it, it's it's not full. Most people are off watching the games. And, uh, right. Enjoying the is there so that the tavern is mostly empty there's perhaps just a couple of other regulars scattered around uh the charcoal burners in their their little booth and you guys yeah so um sefer to go over to the um um charcoal burners and sort of like he, he's going to try to be polite as he possibly can um even though he's not sort of like very um friendly um towards them and he he'll just sort of like um say say to him he's not very good at deceit or anything like that so and he's a fair Sefford's a, a a straight up sort of like guy and he'll just sort of like say have you seen anybody in here today with a shimmering cloak and smelling of lavender <laughs> okay that's forward enough um Black Tam Shandy, the leader, a uh, small man, big chip on his shoulder. That was the um, one that poked me right at the beginning. It was the one that was poking you, yes, yes. At, at, at the scenario. Uh, he's got a mop of black hair and a, a, a single mono brow above, uh, above his eyes. Uh, he sort of looks up at you, licks his lips, pushes himself back in his seat. Uh, he's tapping his fingers on the table, and you can see that he's missing two fingers from his uh, left hand. He's got his uh, his middle finger, his index finger, and his thumb, and then just stumps. And he, he sort of looks you up and down and says, What of it? So you did then? Looks at his, his colleagues. Might have, might not. Who's asking? And set Sefford a look at his his own colleagues but also the guy's colleagues and sort of like looks around and just sort of like says me yeah you obviously want something from us doesn't he lads they immediately agree with tam so we may have seen something we may not all depends how badly you want to know how badly do you want to know big man well how much do you like your remaining fingers? Are you threatening me? Ah, uh, just, just asking. That sounded like a threat, Tam, says one of them. Yeah. He wants to call you out. And they all agree that this was definitely a threat. And there is a subtle shift in the atmosphere the four charcoal burners are beginning to shift in their seats turning to look at you uh tam shandy continues to tap his fingers he's got that sort of i'd like to see if i can take you look in his <laughs> <eye>. <laughs> he, he, is he sort of like four foot nothing this guy yeah about that yeah <laughs> he, but you know what to say about the small ones yeah he um Sephard, Sephard obviously doesn't want to start a barroom brawl here, although he's a little bit disappointed that he feels that he's asked a reasonable question and he doesn't almost like understand this this need. He's not too sure what they want. Um, and he, he's, he'll sort of like say, uh, hang on a minute, let me call one of my, fr let me call all my friends over. And he sort of like turns around um, to the um, other three and sort of like beckons the, them over and looks at Sir Jedney with his um, arm in a sling and sort of like gestures for him to uh, stay there, you know, ju 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 just in case. Sir so, Jedney so, so would be there anyway, tankard in his left hand sling. So like nonchalantly, but never breaking eye contact because he thinks something's going to go down. I'm, I'm yeah, going to pretend well, that they're they as he's drinking from his cider. And he, uh, some, when, when, somebody grims. When, he looks harmless. Yeah. <laughs> Sefford would probably smile at that. <laughs> that he, he understands that joke. And he, he, he'll turn to um, Mandelbrot and Bascule and say, these gentlemen... These charcoal burners appear to know something about the strange guy, about the blonde hair, shimmery cloak guy that smells of lavender. 
Oh, is that so, my large friend? Um, and as he's talking, he, he, uh, uh, Mandelbrot will, um, will will casually hook both his little fingers into, again, into the side of his, his, his tunic on, on the little toggle there. Mm-hmm. And as, as he says it, he, he will look and he will just go um, uh, with his, his thumb and forefinger and he'll go like that and then he'll go blow and he'll blow out a, a puff of air and he's going okay. to cast Bastille's Tremulous Nesta. <laughs> Tremulous Nesta. <laughs> Sounds okay. like some Who's kind of it? parasite. <laughs> no, it no, no, no. Does, doesn't it? Yeah. Bastille's yeah. Tremulous Nesta. A nasty little Come spell on. that causes Come people on, to blur you... things out if they're not careful. You you um, invested in your folk magic. <laughs> Very much. Donkey donkey. <laughs> <laughs> As Jesus tremulous nesta. Okay, right. So we'll we'll have a go at that. So yes. if you want to keep your casting role, please, Mandelbrot. Certainly. Oh, I would like to use a point of look. My last point of look to okay. re-roll, please. Re-roll it because he, he's feeling the the, the, the he, he's had a bad day. The second oh, rolls never happy. go well, Mandelbrot. I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you what. <laughs> they can... never go well. <laughs> No. You, you just missed it by five points. Yeah. Um, so I'll let that first roll stand, but it's going to cost you um, one magic point and then an additional 1d3 on top of it. Um, right. Let's work out this. So one uh, roll. Uh, in fact, I type it out. So four yeah. slash roll. Space one, one d three. Oh, <laughs> like, it costs you two, two magic points, but we will we will let the skill go at that fifteen. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I was, was typed out my character sheet. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's okay. All right, so the the spell has gone off. Um, so do, do I get my luck point back? <laughs> yep, you you haven't spent oh, the luck. I'm I'm letting you. that roll because it, it was just. Within five points of, of mm. needing, just gonna it's gonna come at a, at a slightly bigger cost. And you of need course, to talk about in wills about this. Yeah. <laughs> this is a close match, but but everybody is aware that you are working magic. Mm. Everybody knows yes. they're not happy about it. Um, so Tam Shandy is going to get a willpower roll to resist this, and he rolled a thirty. It's uh, not. Right. Actually, no, that is a success. So given that your role was only just a success, I'm not going to oppose it where normally you would win an opposed role there. Yeah. So it's not quite good enough to uh, for, for, for the spell itself to work. So you've used the magic points. Mm-hmm. Um, Shandy suddenly stands up aware that you've tried it, his, his lips have started to sort of work and, and he was just about to blurt something out and has managed to resist it and hold it back in and looks at you with absolute fury lads they must be the ones behind their high dudgeon bastards let's get them Ooh, nice um can I just say, I am not responsible for this, Mandelbrot. No. <laughs> well, Ma- 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 oh Mandelbrot God. will look at Sephard and say, they are responsible for your love. <laughs> no, <anyway. laughs> All right. Mandelbrot's been doing too much magic. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> I, I'm clearly burnt out at the moment. Now, now you know why he plays melee in art. <laughs> <laughs> Brodage combat, my favourite. <laughs> you have a choice now. Um, they're they're spoiling for a fight. The uh, the attempt to cast magic means that they they really do want to have a crack at this. Um, Black Tam's clearly got it in for for Sefford. They think they can take on Siedney because he's only got one arm. So Sefford um, Sefford would like to sort of like um, put 
a, a passive hand out, um, almost like as if not a clenched fist, just sort of like a hang on a minute, and sort of like say, I think we're looking for the same thing. We're looking for the people who might be causing low dudgeon to lose all the time. Is that what you're doing? Give me a formidable influence, Ron. Oh, it doesn't need to be formidable, I tell you. Yes, it does. It needs <laughs> to be formidable. Um, uh, yeah, I failed miserably. Yeah. The the charcoal burner's blood is up. They're spoiling for a fight. They're going to have one, and they're going to have it with you. Cool. So I was going to give you the option to see if, if you wanted to vacate the premises quickly. Um, anybody that still wishes to may, with the exception of Sefford, hmm. who is going to have to stand there because you're, you're trying to keep them calm. Um, otherwise, there's going to be a bit of fisticuffs now. Um, <laughs> so Yedney, so Yedney's going to roll his love of the festive uh, loyalty to the festive fellows. I think if you manage to succeed, it he'll stay. If not, he'll, he'll okay. back out because of his own. Oh, very, very good, good idea. Give me a roll. He's, he's staying. He's staying. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, Mandelbrot will. Uh, he's grown up with thirteen siblings. He knows what a fist fight is. He's going to stand there and he's going to cover Sephod's left side to make okay. sure nobody tries to suck. Or well, probably you. half of his left side. Just half so. <laughs> of his left side. He, he, he's already there with the family. Um, he knows. He knows what's what. He, he knows he's made a mistake. He wants to make up for it. All right. So you're standing shoulder to shoulder. Baskill, what are you doing? Uh, Baskill's going to stay with the fight because, I mean, uh, Surfy's always backing him up. But um, if if he can, if, if he, well, the goal would be um, he already has one mug of cider, I presume, and it's probably of varying capacity. Yep. He'd want to be eyeing for a second mug, uh, potentially, to have to be double holding mugs uh in, in well, case i, fights I, I, I think you, you can have dual mugs okay he's <laughs> been kind of gripping them as tensions are, are rising and is like positioning to start a violent juggling act okay just in case you, you have your mugs the uh the charcoal burners have come out of the booth they're squaring up to you guys now um black tam is slipping a set of brass knuckles onto his hand and so it's going to be a roll for initiative, please. 18. No, my, my, um, no. Yes, 18 I am, yeah. Um, 18 is surfed. My initiative modifier is a 15, if that matters for the difference between Mandelbrot and Bascule. Uh, no, not really. So we've got surfed on 18. Uh, Mandelbrot on 16, Basque on 16, and Siedney on 15. Right, so the charcoal burners, and I'm just going to treat them as one. They will all act on the same initiative. I'm not going to uh, overcomplicate things here. Okay, so they have got a nine with their initiative bonus right that puts them pretty high up they're going to act first they're on 29 nice so they're all going to get an attack in each um they have two action points uh you've all obviously got your own mm. okay so we will start with black tam and he is going to try and punch uh Sefford with his brass knuckles. So he's wading in with his uh, thug life combat style, which is 65%. And he's got a 10, which is a success. Is this, uh, this is coming towards me, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. So he's he's successfully hit you. So you can try and defend against I'll, that. I'll It'll, just yeah. try to block it um, to parry it with my uh, my own um, combat skill. 
Yep, Perfect. absolutely. Yeah, 37 out of 85. Okay, you swat the incoming punch away like a gnat yep. is, uh, is trying to bother you. So that was an action point for you. Uh, I've, got my, right. I've got my combat card, look. Excellent. Oh, old. <laughs> All right, so we've got the second charcoal burner, and uh, this one is going to uh, take a swing at uh, Mandelbrot. So, Mandelbrot, incoming 63, and that is a success, Ooh. just. Um, I will try to parry. Okay. With that. And you can parry I, with an armed. It's uh, uh, I don't think I can beat it, but I will go. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. No, sorry, uh, my apologies. It's a differential roll, so you just need to succeed. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not an opposed right. roll. Right, sorry, George, I'll, I'll do my unarmed in that case. 35 out of 38. Okay, so both succeeded. There's no damage there. So that's an action um, point there. I have defensive minded trait, which means my, my weapon's larger. Does that make a difference? Um, um, it, no, only if somebody if I crit, with, yeah. with chair leg, then you'd be able to do right. yeah. that. But with this, no. It's uh, straightforward. Okay, right. So the third one, who's uh, going to try and take a swing at Bascule with his uh, his dual mugs. 90, completely misses. And then finally, the one that's going to have a go at Sietni. 24, and that is a hit. Sietni so will um, try and try and block him with his, with his left arm as the punch comes in. Okay, right. So, uh, give me a um, an unarmed roll for that. Uh, I'm uh, not going to be That's a standard. Uh, got a forty three on a fifty five. Yep. Okay. That's all you need. That's good enough. Uh, so that's an action point for you. Um, and all four of the charcoal burners have had an action. Uh, right. So we come to Sefford. Facing off against Black Tam. Yeah, um, Sefford and he's just taunting you, and um, he'll just sort of like go and just sort of like okay. s slam um, his um, fist into him, gets a eight crit. <gasps> Ooh, you critted. Yeah. Ouch. All right. Um, he's got one action point. Um, he's going to try and sort of. That this huge fist is hurtling towards his face. Um, he's going to try and defend against that. Um, he parries with a 65. Let's see what happens. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Critical success versus a failure gives you two special effects, one of which you can take from the crit chart. I have a trait that is knockout blow that I'm not yes. too sure what that does. Okay. So knockout blow. Let me quickly get the rules to hand. Oh, it's red. I've got to reach for the rules. Uh, knockout blow. When attacking with surprise, with surprise, you treat any stun location as lasting for minutes instead of turns. So it doesn't affect in this case, but it doesn't need to. I mean, you, you, you've just landed an almighty great whack which he's failed to parry. So, you know, it's you know, two, two special effects, one of which can certainly be choose location. Yeah, uh, I want to um, choose location um, on him yeah. for the damage, but I also want to try to um, trip opponent with him as well to take him down onto the, yep, down onto the floor. Um, yeah, and you rolled a crit, so that's going to be very, very difficult for him to resist. So that's a good use of the of the effects there. Um, okay, so we'll see if we can resolve the the trip. You, where, where are you hitting him, by the way? In the face? Um, yeah, I'm going to try to sort of like s knock his jaw. So he's yeah. Sort oh, of you, like... you'll have hit him in the face. Yeah. 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 Right, and you, you're sort of trying to trip him at the same time, or push him over, or, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, or be... knock him so hard that he just sort of like. Yeah. Oh, it's almost like that cartoon thing, you know, when you hit them hard and go <laughs> and yeah. flip over. It's probably going to look a bit like that in the movie. Yeah. Uh, 
Right, so he's going to make an athletics roll, an opposed athletics roll against your uh, eight. Your, do you think you're hard enough? Yeah. Which was a crit on a zero eight. Yeah. Um, he, <laughs> he can't do it. <laughs> oh, no. he actually got a crit, but it's not good enough. It's not good enough to my eight. <laughs> Am Shandy is going down. So uh, you get your your damage. Um, um, there's he's not wearing any armor, and I, I'm assuming I can put my damage modifier on this. Oh yes, yeah. Oh yes, oh yes. Um, so that's a total of three points. I got two on a D three and one on a one D six, which is my damage. Oh, so oh, three yeah. points to his head. Okay, three points to his head. Right, you you you. You whack him hard in the jaw. It sent him spinning round. He stumbles, and he's now flat on his back. Um, he is out of action points, um, and he's just sort of lying there uh, prone on the ground. It's it's He's going to have to generate uh, an action if you let him to try and, and get up again. So he's going to be a serious deal. All his, his actions are going to be at formidable while he's now lying on his yeah. back. Uh, Mandelbrot, we mm. come to you. This chap is just taking a swing at Mandelbrot. He's going to get a kick to the saddle. <laughs> <laughs> kick to the ghoulies. Uh, yes. First of um, fighting. He'll look him in the eye and just swiftly kick. And he will just scuff and the hits side the table leg like... <laughs> and miss. Oh, okay, you, you you take a wild swing, <laughs> swivel around a bit, and completely miss the yeah. uh, the uh, the charcoal burner, who's not going to spend an action point to defend against you. So uh, he's got one in hand. Uh, right, Basquiel. Uh Basquiel is going to use some of his planning with these mugs to uh, smash a mug or, or toss a mug into a. Uh, the, the guy that's attacking him, uh, hopefully with some force and some um, grace, but we'll see what the dice gods say. Okay, so you actually are you actually hurling the mug at him? Yeah. Okay. As, as hard as I can. I will let you augment your um, your combat style with your juggling for that. Oh, nice. And my juggling is at sixty-four. So that's let's say thirteen. Okay, right. So that is a. Bro, that, that was that just the thirteen going on to my, my. That, that was how much I was getting help from. I haven't rolled yet. Here uh, is my. Can I use a point of luck to reverse it to a forty-seven? Yep, you can. Okay, so. <laughs> was these were these tankards full? <laughs> Mine was partially full. Um, partially full. So it's, it's arcing gracefully through the air, um, heading towards um, this guy. And I am going to give him an evade roll, uh, which will leave him prone if he, uh, if he succeeds in this one. Uh, so uh, he's I'm prone on a bar floor. 40%. Oh, oh, fails it completely. So he's going to take a half full mug of ale to uh, give me a d20 roll to see where. And you do get a special effect as well. Uh, 18 would be left arm. Uh, yep. So you've smacked him in the shoulder. His left uh, shoulder. Specials. Uh, <laughs> would stun location work with? Yep. The... Stun, will, stun location will work on that. I will definitely give it. So, okay. That's what I'd like um, to do. I'm going to give you 1d3 plus 1 damage for the mug. Okay. Um, and you get stun location as well. Here is the 1d3 plus 1 for damage. A oh, beautiful two. Um, two. And for stun oh. location, he gets an endurance. Check. Yep. He's now going to make an endurance roll. And Against that's... my 47. Yep. So we got a 37. It's not good enough. Um, it's a successful endurance roll, but it's not going to beat yours. So uh, his arm is now going to be useless for a little while. Number of turns equal to the damage inflicted. So that'd be uh, two turns, yeah? Yep, that's two turns. So he is not doing anything with that uh, 
back left arm for a, a, a bit. And that's Bascule's action point. So, uh, see Edney. So oh, and he's also, he's also uh, flat on his uh, side as well. Because he, he threw himself out of the way. That's probably where he stunned his arm. So Edney, not wanting to be left out, is going gonna, is gonna to throw a punch. He's left-handed, oh. so it's not his, his main hand, but he'll, he'll throw a punch at this chap. Um, I'll, I'll make it a hard roll, Ooh. given that it is your offhand. He will use a point of luck to reverse that to a 34. <laughs> okay. That's all right. And, and he succeeds and is going to whack. All right. The pressure's on. He has to. He has to. He has to drop his person. Oh, <laughs> Devon, he failed. They're they're on combat style sixty five. So he's failed in his role there. So you get a special effect and to damage. Ooh, um, special effects. I was hoping for flurry. So the the idea was he was going to lash out with his fist. Yeah. And then and a, follow up with a cheeky kick as as just afterwards. If if that's yep. all right. Nice. You can definitely do that. Yeah, it's unarmed. It's an unarmed effect, so that is absolutely fine. Okay, so you can make an immediate follow-up attack. It still costs you an action point. Yes, but that's fine. Follow up with, with another boot that's if you wish. That's fine. You'll follow up immediately with the boot. What we were to attempt to anyway. Yeah. No, no, boot missed. But boot, boot missed. Okay, boot missed. Uh, and he's out of action points anyway. Um, when when you flurry, this is just yeah. a, a a rule question, um, mm -hmm. not to inflict. You know, if you flurry, does that second attack just come off because you spent a, a special a special point on it, or do you still have to utilize an action? You're still using an action. It's just letting you take it. Got faster. you. So it would be an action so point for the first. Your one. next turn, yeah. it's bang bang. Yeah, yeah. It's got uh, you. and it's got to be a different body part as well. So yeah. fist, head, butt fist kick whatever you're doing Got you. um we but, don't yeah, that, use that. it a lot so that's no, useful no yeah. we don't um right, it's so the helps in martial arts and pugilism and that kind yeah of thing. And bar room brawls is where it's going to come into oh yes yeah, nice yeah so the kicks missed but he's still landed the punch first so the um, kicks missed he's still landed the punch right all the charcoal burners are out of action points so does any yet so yedney is out by my reckoning uh who has action points left i'm out do you want me to? Sorry. Do you want me to result, um, roll damage on the? Um, oh the yes, damage? please. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Because I've done that. Um, so that's t twenty. So I've punched him in his eight. Okay. Slap bang <laughs> in his abdomen. Slap gut. bang in his abdomen. Good gut punch. Punch the guts. Yep. Um, what damage do you want me to roll for the? Uh, it's um, going to be one d three. Plus your damage modifier if you have one. Ooh, you have one, I think. I do. Uh, roll 1D. Do you know, I was sat there thinking this is going to take Jedney a while to type oh. this because he's only got one arm at the moment. And then suddenly... <laughs> 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 I was actually... You're that immersed in the game. I am, yeah. honestly. <laughs> click, click. That's uh, my roll, isn't it? Sorry. Yeah, forward slash. Oh, forward slash. And you can type R instead of roll. Slash R, D3. Ah, oh, can you now? No, oh, yeah. yeah, it's my go-to. I hate extra letters. No, it didn't, it didn't like that. A slash. Ah, oh, one d three gap. Ah, uh, one d three. I did d three because that's what Mister Pickles said. No, he's American. Don't worry about it. <laughs> slash. Oh, I'll, just, I'll just do it. I'll just. I'll do it. No, I can't do it that way. Is there a space in between the slash yeah. and the R? Well, yeah. No, no, no slash R space one d three. Alternatively, just pick a number between one, two, and three, press the button, and hit return. <laughs> <laughs> Slash random three. Slash roll. Like that. <gasps> there we go. You got it? Oh, it's not. What was it? So, slash roll. Forward slash roll space 1d3. There, there you go. go. And then the damage Two points. Modifier. There you go. Yeah, that and, was... and then the damage modifier. Is um, that another 1d3? <laughs> no, it's probably 1d2. 
Uh, so that's three points of damage. So got there eventually. Points of damage to his, his abdomen. C two. Abdomen. So you, you've slugged him in the guts. Um, that's it, it, not... did it. it did it. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's nowhere near enough to take him down, but he's uh, he, he's definitely been been whacked. So um, I think Baskell right. got Baskell had some more action points. Did you? Uh, yeah, Baskell has two points uh, since he didn't have to dodge anybody. He yeah, just threw exactly. one mug. Okay, so Mandelbrot, uh, do you have any left, or are you out? I am completely out, thank you. Okay, so it's just Baskell. <laughs> so okay. and my opponent. Um. For the second mug, could Baskill use that to target the the the, the guy that's fighting with um, Mandelbrot? Oh yes, please. Yes, oh. you can. Yep. Okay. Five against uh, well, one. A range. <laughs> this uh, is what Hasbro does all the time no! with his spear, <laughs> and now he's on the works. other side of it. <laughs> please miss. Please miss. Oh. Hit that Mandelbrot in the back of the head. Seven right. <laughs> um. Payback Would this roll yeah. still be using the um, the uh, juggling? Uh, no, I, I think you can you, 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 you can only have the juggling on one roll. So this will be a straight. Oh, that's fine. Just want to make sure before I get my <laughs> Need every help you can get. <laughs> it's in my face. Not quite. <laughs> Why? Okay, so that is gonna whoosh, and fly over and miss. So. There's still, Good idea, though. Just a whole okay, lot of but ale drips on Mandelbrot. Yeah. <laughs> the ale is now everywhere. <laughs> the cider is everywhere. I think you've got one left, haven't you, Baskill? Um, yeah, and, and that option, um, or that action, Baskill would try and either move to grab another mug or try and grab one within range. Yeah, there's one on the. But presumably, you're standing by the bar nonchalantly yeah. hurling mugs at people. There is <laughs> one more mug of ale that's all for cider that, that's just been slid down down the bar. Down the bar. <laughs> <laughs> what big <Well>, reload? It's <laughs> <laughs> been my action to uh, grab that and prepare to throw. Okay, so you've rearmed for. <laughs> Yeah. For the next round. Okay, right. So we're we're back to the top, and uh, this is going to be the charcoal burners who are in various states of disrepair. So Tam Shandy is lying on his side, hurling curses up at um, Serpent. Um, he's going to try and lash out with his feet. Um, this is going to be a formidable. So. Uh, he needs to get uh, 33 or less to be able to hit. He gets a 39. So he spent an action point, lashed out with his feet, completely missed. Uh, now, you can spend a point to defend against this if you want, Ian. If you succeed, you'll generate an effect. Yes. Or you can just wait. I, I would um, like to um, parry that blow. Um, I'm going to try, if I get a special, I'm going to try to grip and as his foot comes out, just sort of like almost like grip his leg. So I've got hold of his leg if possible. Ooh, crafty. All right. Okay, so this is my do you think hard enough roll? Oh, oh. <laughs> hang on, hang on. No, no, because I'm going to use my last point of luck to reverse that to make it 79 because I am not failing this, I tell you. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's just too cool to fail at the moment. He's using his hatred of Very cool. All right. So you're reversing that to a 79. That will give you a success, and you're gripping hold of uh, Tam Shandy's ankle. Yeah. All righty. Uh, let me just get to the effect so we can adjudicate this one properly. Grip is another one that doesn't get used all that much uh, whenever we're, we're playing. I know he needs... Okay, so yeah. yeah. The opponent can attempt to break free on his turn, brawn or unarmed against whichever of the two skills a group of prefers. If the gripped victim wins, they manage to break free. So he is now gripped. Um, so he can't disengage, and you can effectively do really what you like with him. Um, he's He was at formidable... Okay, I'm not going to impose any further penalties for being gripped, but you've uh, he he can't get up. 
he's not going to be able to get up while you've got hold of him. All right, so um, that was Tam Shan. Can I just so, use a, a free action just to um, almost like um, almost like cry out uh, uh, an intimidating words and almost like say, uh, shout out again, we're on the same side. You will lose. You know, as I've got um, hold of his... You, 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 can, you can do that, but he's busy screaming insults as you, so... That's fine. Uh, he's been warned. He, he just told you what he, he thinks of the mother. <laughs> right, so that was... Uh, that was... Tam so the second one that's been attacking Mandelbrot, uh, right, he is now going to try and throw a punch at you. Uh, that's a 32. That's a success. Right, I shall try to parry... With my unarmed defence. Oh. And you successfully swap that back. Okay. And Bascule. So the one that you have just slugged with your first mug. Um, there's a certain amount of distance uh, between you. Um, he's going to try and hurl himself forward. And oh, actually, no, he was down, wasn't he? Yeah, he's evade. Um, yeah, because he evaded. Yeah. Right. He's going to use his action to try and get up. Uh, so let's. Uh, going to have him roll athletics to make that. Yeah, he's managed to regain his feet, but he's not going to be able to do anything else this round. Uh, sorry uh, for that term. Uh, right. So we're now on to the fourth one that uh, is facing off against Siedney, the one that you've just punched in the guts. Yep. And he is going to try and headbutt you for a 15. That's a success. Ooh. Ooh. Um, so, yeah, so, so Yedney is going to um, roll his unarmed for that. And he's going to try and, if, if he succeeds, he'll um, try and do a sidestep. So he miss, the chap misses. Okay. Uh, so I've got a 40 on a 55 standard. Yeah, that, that's a success. Yeah, you step nimbly to one side and his head whistles just past your nose. All right, that's the charcoal burners out. Uh, it's Sefford. Yeah, I'm going to um, I'm going to take a, a swing at him. Um, can he still? Now, defend... Are you going to take it? You, you've got him by the ankle. Are you going to take a swing at him, or are you just going to swing him? Well, I what I want to do is that I want to um, compel su surrender on him. Right, so you've got to get an attack, a successful attack. Yeah, role. because I could do it if they're. I think I could do it if they're disarmed, lying prone. Which it sounds as if he's currently lying prone. You, you definitely got the advantage just, over him. So I, 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 will, hand, but, I will allow the attempt the if you can succeed in the. Uh, okay. In the skill. Yeah, <gasps> fourteen out of. Is it All still right. standard for me to hit him if he's on the floor? I got. Oh yeah, yeah. It yeah. doesn't change. You've got hold of his leg. You know, yeah. you, you can apply pressure to his leg. You can just bend his ankle backwards or something yeah. like that. Um, so you've definitely succeeded in your attack. He's at formidable, so it's thirty-three or less for him. Eighty-seven, absolutely not. That gives you your special effect. So you want to compel surrender? Yeah. And so this is okay. Willpower against my original attack going to be right so your original was a 14 yeah i'm going to again make him still at formidable for uh for this so he's actually at 17 with a formidable roll oh <laughs> he succeeded but it hasn't beaten yours yeah you've hauled him up you're holding him by one leg and he's sort of dangling all right, all right. You win, ah. guard man. And that's how to use combat specials. <laughs> <laughs> so he's given in. However, all this is happening kind of simultaneously. Yeah. So um, we will still complete the other guy's actions because uh, it's only fair. Mandelbrot, what do you want to do? Um, again, realising that his aim was slightly <laughs> off, Mandelbrot again will swiftly kick out his leg into the unmentionables. Okay. 
Oh, uh, 26 out of 38 standard. Yes. Mm. Okay, let's see if he can uh, defend against that. Oh, misses. Oh. So you get an effect. I want to... Choose um, location for his abdomen. Choose, yeah, <laughs> yeah. choose yeah. location. <laughs> choose location. It will be abdomen because that's the closest <laughs> thing, to be fair. So, yes, that will be my... Um, Okay, and he's taken, what, three points in the abdomen already. So, yeah, he's got four points left there. Okay, my kick is coming. Oh! oh. <laughs> I feel... I feel your pain. I know your shame. <laughs> Down to zero. You, you kicked him square in the bollocks. Um, yep. it, 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 it takes... All the wind out of him, his eyes have popped in their sockets. It's you, you have smited him such a huge and ghastly blow. Uh, an endurance roll against your uh 26. Oh, a, 20, nice. a 28. A 28. A 20, 26 uh, is the first one. I'll, I will take the 26. Yeah, yeah. it was just slow. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now um, you know what so it's like a GMing for Buddy <laughs> back. I'm sorry. <laughs> back on, uh, you are the big shiny hero, so he oh. will not beat that. Oh. And he sinks to his knees, his hands cupped over what remain of uh, the family jewels. Um, and go, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mandelbrot, just forget your fairy magic. You, no, you, you, <laughs> you're miles better at just kicking yeah, people than you are. Vaskill, you've got a mug in hand. And a lot of, a lot of energy to think. Pent up anger. <laughs> Here is um, uh, the throw. It's going to target the guy who just stood up and is coming at him because uh, Vaskill doesn't want to be Okay, the today. one that's just regained his feet. Go for it. Eat mug. No, that's a 59 oh. out of 56. Damn. Okay, that's just missed. All I'm just right. making messes today. <laughs> Never mind. And um, no, I'm not going to bother rolling for, for a defensive roll on that. Uh, there's no point. Uh, See, Edney. Edney is going gonna, is gonna to follow up with, a, with a, another left handed punch against this chap. So he gets oh. an eight. Oh, is that a crit? No. Just shy. No. Just shy of a crit. Just shy. All right. So uh, you've whacked him. Let's see if he can defend against that. No way. 92 on a 65. So he's taking some damage and an effect. Um, which one did I want to use this time? I have one in my head. Um. Oh no, it was a defensive one, that's annoying. Um, I'll try to flurry again if that's all right. Yep, that's fine. Uh, so that's a roll, another unarmed. <gasps> oh. Uh, he would use his last point of luck to uh, re-roll that one. Okay. Nope, nope, nope. he still missed. No, never mind, good attempt. <laughs> never but mind. get the, the damage from the first one. Yeah. Um, so that is uh, a 1 to 20. So it's the 13 this time. So it's, it's right arm. Yep. And then that's so it's two damage. Okay, that puts him down to three in the right arm. Okay, so that. Uh, oh, who has action points left? Not me. Uh, no, nope. not me. Baskill, I think, has one at this point. Reload. Um, uh, yeah, Baskill would probably be, um, at this point, grabbing the chair that he's sitting on, preparing <laughs> to throw that. Okay. <laughs> All right. You can throw you... anything when you're a perfect juggler. Oh, there, there just happens to, there, there's a bar stool next to you. I tell you what, if you want, you can lob the bar stool at somebody. Bar stool lobbed by Baskill. I'm trying to know uh, what Baskill's um, <laughs> combat style's called. Lobby. It's throwing things pr pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame you don't have one of your performing cats yeah. lands in the face <laughs> <laughs> and just like claws <laughs> midair. I, I did kind of have that in mind though, if anything was going to happen. Before, <laughs> but there would be a battle cat. That was the yeah. battle, battle cat, cat and battle, battle rat. rat. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> battle rat. But battle mugs and battle chairs—they work just as well. 
um, so that would be my action is is picking up the chair. Um, I guess I do. I have a second. I guess I'd have. You've got a, you, you can you can reach for the chair and swing it all in to use your two actions up. Okay. Here is my battle chair. Oh. Yes, miss. <laughs> Oh. Okay. All right. So the uh, you, you've hurled a chair. At, uh, <laughs> just got up. He's had to duck to sort of avoid the chair, which is now smashed into the fireplace. Um, all right. Tam Shandy has surrendered. Um, there's there's a guy seen in Soprano. He's definitely going to surrender because he's in so much pain he can't do anything else. Um, the charcoal burners know they've been in a fight with these traveling Wilburys. Um, so they have given up. Uh, what do you want to do with Shandy, who is hanging by his ankle? I, I'm, I'm going to keep him dangling. And I, I'm going to... Um, I want to almost... I want to ask him, so, so what do you know about the bad luck that's been happening here? And who's responsible for it? It's all in my dungeons, isn't it? And you haven't seen... Well, we thought you were helping them, aren't you? No, like I said before, we're fighting the same people. And he, he'll probably be going, Ooh. it's like I said, we're fighting the same people. And Tommy... <laughs> so it will be better if you lift him up to his eyes uh, with your yep. eyes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. And he, he'll sort of like say, he'll... Uh, um, Seth had a uh, think for a minute and then say, thinking back to his original question and say, so did you see somebody with long blonde hair, a silvery cloak and smelling of lavender in here? No! Honest. And you don't know who's doing the nasties to low dudgeon at all? It's the high dudgeoners. It must be. Sefer did this, leave go of him. <laughs> and he collapses in a heap at your feet. They're, they're bloodied and weary. Uh, they sort of s pick themselves up, slink towards the door, and then burst into a run as a group. Sefer's a little going. bit disappointed because he thought they were actually uh, involved in this, but he's disappointed that they're not now. No. As, as they get the door, um, you hear a shout from uh, Mandelbrot saying, and and don't get yourself back. a wash because you smell like smoke. <laughs> How far away was this site that I saw this dancing on? That was then, to the... What, the ritual dancing? Yeah. Uh, you, you were some distance away from it. Uh, you could see it quite clearly, but you, you were probably about, I don't know, 20 or 30 yards we get getting mixed about... up there with the the person at the edge of the forest, which is a person you've just encountered, and the dancing people. Are we not? I'm assuming that they're both the same. No, no. No, the uh, the person that you saw at the edge of the forest, and then there was the ritual dancing, That's which right. was being done by some of the high dungeoners. Right. Or possibly. In the last session. Mm. Yeah, so Sefford just sort of like look look around at. He, he feels that like he's done his bit today. This this is what he does in his act. This is what you know he he does, and he sort of like uh, looks at the tankards all sort of like um, littered all over the place on a broken chair, and sort of like says to Basco, "Good throw." It wasn't my best show, but thank you, Surfy. The the, the, the the tavern keeper wants to know who's going to pay for all the damage. Seven at this point at Baskill. Was it my <laughs> fault that they made a mess? Pay the man. Uh, Mandelbrot, what's next? They're locals, you're not. Exactly. Um, well, I, you were wonderful there, my friend. You were absolutely splendid when I saw you, your prowess. No, no, have, you, have you seen um, Devil Wears Prada? I no, I don't think so. Oh, no, there's a wonderful bit when the assistant goes, Mandelbird, am I hearing this? I don't want to hear this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, I ignore that. <laughs> so, yeah, 
you've been wonderful today. You, you, the, the, your prowess of, shows no bounds. But we found out that these horseshoes were made by the smithy across the road, as you well know. And so you were distracted by this glowing person who I'm sure has something to do with this, but maybe they're the, the person, the magician who's involved in this. Maybe somebody has made... Seth, well, no. Seth, Seth this is all like says, we need to act. Less talking, more action. We do. Now let's find out who's been taking these, who's been taking these um, horseshoes from the blacksmith and taking them around the town. That's my primary thing that I want to do is find out because the, the, the blacksmith will make four horseshoes for one horse. So who should be giving the other horseshoes to? So Sefford just says, uh, ask the blacksmith. Well, let's go and ask the blacksmith. Blacksmith he, wasn't very available though. Ask the blacksmith. Okay. All right. So after all the excitement in the tavern, uh, Bascule, um, are you paying for the damage? Um, Bascule would like to tell a lie because uh, he's a very deceitful person yeah. and try and get out of paying by saying something like, I do have the money and this is oh, very bad, you know, uh, but it's it's out. I don't carry that much money for, for chairs uh, to fight off. You enemies. slimy person. You <laughs> I'm, I'm going to lie and say that I'll, I'll be back uh, in the evening. For more cider with all the coin okay give me a uh give me a deceit roll big money oh you got <laughs> big money it's a, bit, it's a little bit oh! too oh, no. <laughs> a, a fumble on um plovid the landlord's insight roll <laughs> oh, all right then anytime <laughs> lads ah. you lucky blighter <laughs> Yeah, I was I'll be back later. No, son, you'll be clean dishes for You're the rest not of the day. Any time, <laughs> bring your friends. <laughs> Break cool. it whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. So let let's head. You break it, we make it. <laughs> let's head over to the blacksmith. Okay, over to the blacksmith. All right, so back across the road. There's still a line of customers outside. If not that much time has passed. Uh, so the blacksmith is still busy. Uh, the young girl, uh, her name is Shanna. She's going up and down. She's she's dealing with the customers. Um, so, yeah, how, how do you want to try and, and, and approach the blacksmith? Um, Mandelbrod will turn to Sephiroth and say, Sephiroth, I want to speak to the to the uh, blacksmith, could you um, make a space and get me in there, please, with all our friends? Yeah, Might it be easier if um, we just use Hollyhock? She could probably do with pair um, being reshod anyway. Well, I, I probably could. Yeah, mm, I, I, I agree. She, she well the... Exactly. Yeah, mm. she's. She, 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 I like to keep Hollyhock in perfect riding condition um, and looking as beautiful as possible. So I'll. If I fetch her, then we okay. can, go, then we go can queue up and, and then we can get the full attention of the blacksmith because he's going to have to check her horseshoes anyway. All right. There are not that many Destriers come through um, Low Dungeon. So as you join the back of the queue, uh, Shanna sees this gorgeous, brilliant white horse with all the braiding in her mane and your, your coat of arms on there and all this. And um, she squeals in delight, uh, comes running up, Produces half an apple from somewhere, which which Hollyhock waits to see if you will let her have. Yes, yes, he will this time. She takes the, the half apple. Uh, Shanna then rushes in to to get Naka, who, when he's finished on his his chore, he comes striding out, sort of looking at the Destria, comes walking up, um, nods at you, picks up one of the hooves, looks at it, goes. Mm -mm. The next one looks uh, goes round very very yeah. practiced eye is already sized her up. Okay, at that point, um, so Yedney will say um, to the blacksmith, "I was hoping for um, four pairs of of those," and then he'll gesture to um, I can't remember who's got the the, the examples of the horseshoes. Uh, Sefford has one, and I have one. Um, so he'll gesture to to Sefford and say, "The ones like this um, that my chap here is holding." Sephora, hold it up. 
Necker um, comes close, looks at the horseshoe. Where did you get that? To me? Yeah. Is it to, yeah. Um, Sephon says, is it yours? You're bloody right, it's mine. Where did you get that? If I got the gate one or the house one. House you, one. you got the house one. Yeah. yeah. I, I say, I took it down from over Renard's house. Did you put when it you there? Said, did I bugger it? What have I been doing putting horseshoes about? That horseshoe was stuck. That is from job number 1472316. Made on, gives you the precise date. If I'm not mistaken, it was actually made at 3 p.m. that day. Oh, yes. Who, and that Who did you sell the horseshoe to? I didn't sell it, clever face. Yeah. You just... I didn't sell it. It was stolen. You're there just... were seven of them. They were stolen. Some bugger, probably from High Dudgeon, broke into my... It'll be that Semence. He's always here. He's always had it in for me. He's not as good, you see. He's not as accurate. He can't just size up a horse like I can. And it turns out that seven horseshoes... 10 years ago from job number one seven whatever were stolen from knackers forge and smithy and he never saw them again until da, da, da. today damn him he knows his own handiwork he has got a memory like somebody that's got a very good memory yeah <laughs> Like Mrs. Miggins. Yeah, uh, I pass it. Um, pass the uh, Mandelbrot. You would have heard that. I, I assume. Mm, I did. Yes. Oh yes, yes. So, 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 my friend, we are finding these. We, we, we have two of them. We know the location of two more around your town, but they are placed upside down. Now, I've, I, I've been able to move two of these. Well, to be fair, one of these, but with the help of Sephron here, um, f from from the buildings. But there is one still placed in the well, upside down. There is one still placed on the lumberyard sign, upside down. Who would do this? You 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 say are these stolen? He's absolutely flabbergasted at this. Uh, everybody knows that that's bad luck. And his face falls as the penny drops. Shanna, sh show her, show her. I've got them customers. And sure, he's still got a line of customers that he's got to deal with because everybody's sort of tapping their feet, folding their arms and going. No, no problem, my good friend. If, if, if Shanna is your, is your, if you've got utter confidence in her, we have confidence in her. And, um, he will, uh, Madrebot will go to her and say, look, we've explained to, um, to, to your master that these, these shoes that he had, he had stolen seven years ago, apparently. He knows which ones they are. There were seven of them. We I know, found... I heard he never stops going on about it. Well, it's disgusting, isn't it? Well, we think, we've been tasked by your leaders of the town council here to find out who is causing bad luck around here and so far we found four of your master's horseshoes upside down in this town now we've removed two and there's two more we we know where they are where they are we still need to find three more but who stole them do you know there's, well clearly you won't know but there's one on the horse trough around the back the old horse trough is it upside down yes Oh, my goodness, show me now. Show me, my love, show me. So she, does. she takes you around the back of the smithy. There's an old discarded horse trough that's kind of half buried by, by weeds and undergrowth. Pulls it back, and there, sure enough, there is an upside-down horseshoe. Rusted, but definitely one of knackers. Se Sephron is saying to her, um, to Shannon, do you know who put it there? No. So how did you know it was there? Well, 
I'm always getting sent out here to sort of scour things and do things and, and throw, throw away the, 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 the chiselings and all that sort of stuff. I just saw it. I never thought anything of it, though. Why would you? I just thought it got stuck there. Have we taken the one down from the inside of the tavern? Was there one over? Oh, you no, know, no, no, we haven't yet. No, no, that's still right. there. So at the moment, we've, we've taken off the post and from the cottage. Yep, you've so, got the post and the cottage ones in your grasp. I failed miserably on the tavern. Yep, you didn't get the tavern one. No. But it was difficult and you weren't in contact. I with wasn't it. in contact, no. So with that in mind, um, Mandelbrot will then kneel down to this horseshoe. Yep. And again, he will look at it and he will focus. And again, he will try to put his mind into the horseshoe and through it. And he can go through all the facets of all what's going on inside. And he wants to just follow where the magic goes and try to release it. He knows it's not supposed to be there. It's unnatural. So he wants really? to just... Willpower with fairy magic as an augment. Yep. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. The familiar, by now, tingling sensation up through your arms, and the horseshoe drops neatly into your hand. Wonderful. Does Shannon know where any, where there are any more of these upside-down horseshoes? In the She doesn't, but she can go looking for it. If I find them, if I help... If I help you, and she looks at Siedney and sort of does that thing that, that people do when they're sort of coyly trying to get around to asking a, a personal question. Could I be your squire? Oh, You're a knight, aren't you? I'll say I yes. I am a knight. You <laughs> need a squire. A I'm dead good. And I love horses. And you've got the prettiest horse I've ever seen. Oh, go on, please. Yeah, let, go on. Let, I don't want to be a blacksmith. Oh. I hate you can have your very own tiffin. <laughs> <laughs> Without the sniffing. Yeah. <laughs> um, just say yes. Uh, I'm just trying to think if there's a role that he wants to... <laughs> no, um, how, how has Hollyhock taken... How did Hollyhock take to um, to her? Was, was, was Hollyhock... Was like said, someone gave her half an apple. And you in, let her in, have it. She, she's thrilled. In, in that case, because he noticed how well she'd handled Hollyhock um, and how much he loves Hollyhock, he would say yes. He would say, of, of course, yes, if you, if you can find some more. And um, your parents agree, because I'm, I'm not taking them without taking you without your parents. If they agree, then then yes, of course, you can you can be my okay, squire and um, look after Hollyhock. She violins start playing from the small orchestra on the, the other oh. side. She, she, was, she was left to be apprenticed to Naka. Her parents left several years ago and she has not seen them since oh she's had to sleep in the forge fancy bringing night. that up <laughs> making her relive that i'm sorry i i was i, I was unaware i've i'm not from your from so so she's so the parents so, so the parents, so the parents issue is not an issue not an issue then yes of course if you can help find it find them then yes of course you can you can be my squire wonderful she she hugs you hugs hollyhock I'm going to love her and squeeze her and rub her. And she's absolutely thrilled with that. So, yes, she, she will go and scour the village for the remaining horseshoe, now that that is there. Uh, so you've got three horseshoes in your possession. Um, the one from the smithy, one from the cottage, and one from the gate. Uh, now, I'm just checking the time here. It's 10 to 5, which means it's 10 to 10. Yeah. in your corner of the woods that is probably a good place to kind of leave things yeah. and, uh, and and round off there um so we haven't finished obviously uh next saturday i have got another game going on and that of course it does fun. depend if you want to carry on playing this so i i leave the option to you and if you do then we can arrange for when we'll pick it up so uh i think that'd be nice if cuz i, I like I'm just looking at everybody else's cameras on my other screen. <laughs> so yeah, so that that'll be I. It would be brilliant if we can finish it off um, because I I think that was great to have that bit of combat today. 
because I think Sephron sort of like excels at that. That's what. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so we we had to have a barroom ball. Yeah, it, so uh, I mean, I, I, the circumstances wasn't planned. The circumstances just kind of led us there. Yeah. So we'll arrange another time. Yeah, then. we can get in touch via email and then arrange another time and then that that would be absolutely fantastic and, and hopefully we can finish it off. And I'm looking at magic points going. There's three more horseshoes. I have so four more horseshoes. I have three magic points. Yeah. I, okay. I, I would imagine that we will close through another day. So I will. There, there will probably be some magic. Too kind. Things. Too kind. No, too kind. It's coming down yes. to the wire. It's still going to be the last day. Won't be many. Day. Don't don't get your hopes up. Won't be many. Oh. That would be that would be brilliant. And I love. Oh my goodness. I do love the names of the combat style. Stars. Mm. I think there's a throwing things pretty hard. <laughs> say what's on the tin. Oh, I just think that's brilliant. So, say what you see. Yeah, so yet, yet again, Lawrence, it's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you uh, so it much. Has. I, I really enjoyed the Donkey Derby. I think that I don't know whether or not Sir Jedney did, but <laughs> we. So, there's a reason Sir Jedney gave up jousting. Yeah. But, and he's feeling that reason now. Yeah. And I, I love things like that because things like um, in the book of quests that has um, lump hefting. In yes, it, awesome. uh, yeah, that, that was yeah, um, yeah. that was Hazards and Hengers. I think they actually have a passion now for you lump hefting. Yeah. <laughs> we lump heft all the time. Yeah, I, I, wow. I didn't write that scenario, but I came up with the lump hefting. Oh, oh that's brilliant! Fantastic. Yeah. That, that yes. was fantastic. We are lump hefters. And it, it's been really nice to see <laughs> players playing a different character, Role. different sort of character, you know, rather oh. than sort of like thinking, oh, you know, I want to go back to my combat or back to um, magic. I'm seeing Mr. Pickles in a completely different light now. <laughs> He's a nasty piece of work, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, so yes, yeah, so, so, so that's brilliant. So I'll be in touch, Lawrence. Yeah, wonderful. Well, I look forward to playing when we next pick this up. So, for yeah. those of you watching, thank you very much indeed for tuning in again. Thank you. And yeah. uh, keep yeah. your eyes open for for Inwill's YouTube site to see when the third instalment of High Judgment yeah. takes place. But uh, to you guys, thank you very much. That was a wonderful fun session again. Uh, and the, the rules else. are rules are now available. Is that right? Yes, yes. Right. It was released um, yesterday, May the first. I wanted to ask, what's the U, uh, um, UK release? Is, is that the same as from Drive Through? So it's been released through Aeon Publishing, uh, it's Aeon, our, right. our UK partners. They, they, it usually takes them a little while to get I, uh, yeah. the, the, the PDF available, but it will be available through them. Keep an eye on their website. How about the hardback? Is that coming through Aeon as well, the hardback? They will do a print version, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And given the size of the book, it, it's uh, yeah. it, it will more than likely be a hardback. It's hardback and softback on drive through. Um, yeah, fantastic. I can say when, when you launched when, when you launched yesterday, it was like, oh my god, I'm going to buy it. And I went to Aon, and I was like, there's nothing there. <laughs> nothing there. <laughs> That's it. Um, I, I was told by the, by the Aon crew that they're hoping to get it there this weekend. So so fantastic. Keep it. That'd be brilliant. Okay, thank you once again for Lawrence for GMing that, and thank you very much to the players for hanging out once again. And we will be back in the final episode to see if we can unravel the mysteries of Low Dudgeon. Until then, we, we never do. We never do. No, just tell us. Just tell us now. And that's it. Until then, but do come back and see us. Brilliant. Okay, say goodbye, everybody. So just for the video. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.